Welcome to Big Ten Football on Peacock, presented by Geico. Week three brings us to Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, where Michael Penix Jr. brings the number eight team in the country, the Washington Huskies, to meet Michigan State in what will be a future Big Ten matchup. We say hello from the broadcast booth. I'm Brendan Burke. Today will be the first Power Five matchup of the season for both of these teams. Today is also Michigan State's first game since the news on Sunday that head coach Mel Tucker was suspended without pay. This coming after allegations surfaced that he sexually harassed a rape survivor and activist during a phone call last year. In a statement on Monday, Tucker said in part that the call was, quote, an entirely mutual private event which the alleged victim denies. Complaint was filed last December. Michigan State then hired an outside attorney to conduct an investigation, which was completed in July. A formal hearing to determine whether Tucker violated the school's policy set for October 5th and 6th. Our college football insider, Nicole Auerbach, reported earlier that Tucker was not suspended until after this became public because university leaders say they learned new details in the USA Today report last Sunday. So with Tucker suspended, Michigan State turns to secondary coach Harlan Barnett as acting head coach. And so much of his job this week was to keep things the same for a team despite the change at head coach. But one thing he did change, restoring the team walk from the Kellogg Center past the Spartan statue on their way to the stadium, something he did when he played here in the late 80s, something he had been done previously during his 15 years as a Spartan assistant. And with that, we welcome in Chris Sims. And Chris, a lot of changes this week for this Michigan State team. It was already going to be a tough week for them with Michael Penix Jr., one of the top college quarterbacks in town. Right. They had their hands full regardless of the situation. And Michael Penix Jr. is one of the best quarterbacks in college football. The big lefty can do it all. I mean, he can throw it short, quick. He makes great decisions. And then really, ultimately, he is a if not the best downfield thrower of the football in all of college football. He's got a great wide receiving core to go along with it, and their offense is extremely diverse. They're very exciting to watch, should be today. All right, with that being said, this is going to be a good football game. What can Michigan State do to try and slow them down? Yeah, they got to make this game ugly. Phone booth football. If this game becomes too spread out and becomes a track meet, Brendan, that favors Washington. We know that. So the, there's two things that really jump out to me. One, the front four for Michigan State has got to get to Michael Penix Jr. by themselves. If they have to blitz too much, he's too smart, the receivers are too good, they'll gash them down the field. The other thing is, let's try to keep Michael Penix Jr. over by the Gatorade bottle, okay? And that is with the running back, Nathan Carter. He is really, really an awesome football player. If they can chew up some clock and make this game a little slowed down, I think that helps Michigan State in a big way. Michael Penix Jr., no stranger to the Big Ten from his time at Indiana. Both teams off to 2-0 and starts. Number eight, Washington, making the trip to East Lansing. We've got kickoff on the way. By Geico, Michigan State in Washington before kickoff. Time to say hello to Caroline Pineda on the field. Caroline? Hello, Brendan. Former Michigan State head coach Mark D'Antonio will be back on the sidelines today, this time as associate head coach. Athletic director Alan Haller called him on Sunday. D'Antonio showed up on Monday and is now serving as an advisor to the coaching staff. Today he will be on the sidelines but not wearing a headset. He told me he will share his observations with acting head coach Harlan Barnett, who said yesterday that D'Antonio has been a mentor to him since Barnett joined his staff at Cincinnati in 2004. D'Antonio retired in 2020 after leading the Spartans for 13 seasons, but he coached nine players on this current roster and recruited even more. Receiver Trey Mosley told us yesterday that a lot of his teammates knew of D'Antonio but didn't know him. When I asked him what he told them about his former coach, he said, I told them he's loyal, signifies stability, and has the respect of everyone he works with. Thank you, Caroline and Harlan Barnett. Not a bad resource for him to have the winningest coach in program history at his disposal. That's right, Brendan. The big thing is just a calming influence on the sideline and a guy who can maybe get in his ear and give him a little advice from time to time. Kalen DeBoer has done a fantastic job in his year plus on the job after coming over from Fresno State. His Huskies kicking it away, and it's Tyrell Henry swallowed up just after crossing the 15-yard line. So it'll be Michigan State football 
to start the game here today, and it's Noah Kim who waited his turn to be the starting quarterback, and he finally gets his chance here this year, made his first career start in week one. He's been, got off to a good start. A good athlete, I think that's where you start. He can, he can run, he can break outside the pocket a little bit. He's got a frail body at 185 pounds, but you'll see here in a minute, when he throws the ball, he has a nice, clean stroke as far as throwing the football and has pretty good, pretty good control of the ball as well. Three years in the program waiting for his shot. He leads the Big Ten in passing the current Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week after his performance last week against Richmond, a 45-14 win for the Spartans. And the pitch is to Nate Carter. Flag comes in as Carter swallowed up. A loss of two on the play. Tupuolo Fatui with the tackle, but we'll check the penalty marker. Matthew Richards, our referee here this evening in East Lansing. Holding. Defense, number 68. 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Huskies only had two penalties in their first two weeks combined, and they take one on the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, interesting. And that, that would make me think that maybe Harlan Barnett you know, notified the referees to look for that. You see Washington do that every now and then. The D tackles will get their hands on the offensive lineman so they can't get on to the next guy or move up to the second level against the linebackers. Handoff goes to Carter. And not much room for him to run. Struggling to get back to the line of scrimmage. Milo Fulcio able to make the tackle. Washington's big up front. Michigan State's O-line is going to have their hands full, but this is what they want to do. They're going to run the ball, try to try their best to control the line of scrimmage, and then occasionally maybe take a play-action shot down the field. On second and 11, Kim to pass over the middle, complete to Montori Foster Jr. And it's going to be a couple of yards shy of a first down out to the 35. Yeah, good patience right there by Kim. Nothing was there on the right side. He resets smoothly, calmly, and then comes back to the left to get the completion. Good job not panicking in the pocket. So third and two. Carter in the backfield along with the big tight end Malik Carr. Just able to move the pile enough, and Nate Carter gets the first down. Off to the right start for Michigan State. Get a penalty, gives him first down, moves the chains a little bit here, and you can see, hey, Washington's defense is fast reacting to the ball, but I like that Michigan State's going to stick with the run here early and kind of let their team settle in. See how much depth they have back there behind Nate Carter, the UConn transfer. He's gotten worked the last couple of weeks. He's going to be worked again today. No Jalen Berger, no Jaron Mangum available. And the sack from Tupolo Fatui. A loss of eight. Washington thought they came up with the football. But Zion Tupolo Fatui with the big play. Wow. Tupa Ola Fatui, first off, Brandon, got an unbelievable jump off the ball to the point where I thought maybe they would call offsides on him. But he gets around the edge, and then Kim takes quite the shot there. And I hope he's okay. He was kind of holding his arm. You can see right there a little bit of a grimace, a little Brock Purdy-ish, if you remember that from the NFC Championship game. Looked like that ball was out. I'm, I'm a little surprised. Uh, and, and there it is, yeah. Yeah. You could see that it was just as Tupuolo Fatui was making contact with Kim that that ball was out and a pretty clear recovery on video. This clock stopped because of the timeout. Now they're going to let Washington get another look at this, yeah. right? And, and, and yeah, live, I thought it was clearly a fumble. So uh, let's let's check out the replay one more time if we can here and just get a better look. Do we see the arm come forward in any way here? Back, no way. It's a fumble. It should be Washington's ball. This should be an easy fix here. Did you Washington get, recover? You I get guess the clear recovery, look. too. There yeah. we go. Okay. So I, I, I'm really shocked that this was given back to Michigan State. Not the start they wanted if they got to turn the ball over here and give the ball to Michael Penix Jr. right here. 
Again, this is not a review. This is just a timeout called, and we have got no indication that this play is being reviewed at all. Nothing at all to this point. I saw Washington's head coach, Ken DeBoer, talking to the referees, and I'm still shocked here. I, I can't even explain this. We saw Noah Kim shaking his arm. He's back out on the field. And what results in second and 18. They try to go to Carter right through his hands, incomplete. Well, let's bring in Reggie Smith. Reggie, your take on what we just saw on a play they did not elect to review. Well, it's unfortunate that they chose not to because, as you notice, when the hit came in, quarterback did not have control of the ball. There was no forward movement of the hand, and it was pinned against their bodies as he fell to the ground. Washington recovered in the immediate action. It should have been their ball. Well, thank you for that, Reggie Smith, our rules analyst. It's Kim to throw, and he throws it to the sidelines on third and 19. And one way or the other, Washington's going to get the ball out of the sequence. Yeah. No, that's not the situation that Michigan State is built for right there. Third, third and long, second and long situations. They don't have great speed at wide receiver. And they want to control the line of scrimmage and keep it third and manageable. That would be best for quarterback Noah Kim. So the first possession for Michigan State will result in a punt as Ryan Eckley comes out on the field, but a flag is thrown before that happens. Illegal substitution. Kicking team, more than 11 players on the field. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. So Harlan Barnett over to check on what just happened, but more than 11 on the field for Michigan State will cost them five yards. So Ryan Eckley, the redshirt freshman, had two punts last week. He got a chance to kick it away here. He's lined up at his own 10. A high spiraling punt, fair catch signal is effective from Jalen McMillan. It's a 31-yard punt, and Michael Penix Jr. will start just shy of midfield. Well, I spoke too soon when I said that Michigan State, this game started the way they wanted by getting that first down, because as soon as I said that, it totally flipped around, and here you're now giving one of the most explosive offenses in college football the ball right around midfield, and they are the kind of offense, and this quarterback is the kind of quarterback where they could throw a 55-yard touchdown pass on the first play. They're dangerous, and like we talked about in the opening, the receivers are extremely talented. Many thought Michael Penix Jr. will be playing on Sundays this fall. Here he is week three Saturday with his number eight Huskies on the road in East Lansing. First play, wide open over the middle is complete to Jalen McMillan, and he slipped a tackle for a few more down to the 16-yard line. 40 yards on the first play. 40 yards in the first play, the pocket was clean, and then really what happened is a late shift by the secondary of Michigan State. There's a corner route, and the backside corner, he should be playing three deep zone, but instead took the cheese up in front of him, and that left McMillan wide open down the field. They hand the ball off to Dylan Johnson on first down, and he slips through inside the 10, down to about the six yard line. Dylan Johnson, the transfer for Mississippi State, did not play last week with an injury. He's in the lineup here today. They got a good group of running backs. And Dylan Johnson, six foot, 218 pounds, cuts on a dime like you see. And the big thing makes the pile move forward upon contact. They gave him nine, second and one. Down inside the 10. The shifts, Brendan. Look at that. Here we go. This is one of the big parts of their offense. All three receivers on the bottom of the screen. And they hand it off. And Johnson takes it. He's got the first down just shy of the goal line. Marked down at the one as Malik Spencer made the tackle. Well, Washington's got to be encouraged by that. I'm not sure they were totally confident in their ability to run against this big Michigan State front. If they can get this going here, they're going to be unstoppable today, and they'll be unstoppable going forward. It's the only thing in the, the offense that you can really question. Will they be able to run the ball when they need to? I know they can throw the ball all over the field whenever they want, 
but they're at some point going to play some defenses that can match up against receivers and they're going to be talented and they're going to need that run game hopefully it continues for them the first two games 563 yards of total offense but only 111 two games combined on the ground they're going to run it again with the wide receiver jeremy bernard the former michigan state spartan takes it into the end zone for a husky touchdown you think they planned that one yep hey when we get close let's give the guy that used to play there a little special play around the edge the speed sweep there and a cheap touchdown pass for michael Penix jr <laughs> But nonetheless, Jeremy Bernard gets the touchdown. He doesn't need the cheap ones. <laughs> he doesn't. But Bernard had to get through Cal Halliday. Nice play. To get into the end zone. Grady Gross out for the extra point. It is good, and it is seven nothing early for Washington here in East Lansing. Forty yards in the first play from scrimmage, and then there you go, Jeremy Bernard, last year a Spartan. This year, a Husky, 7-0, Washington, after one possession each. Just four plays to go 55 yards in two minutes and 12 seconds, capped off by the Jeremy Bernard one-yard touchdown run. Michael Penix, Jr. Made it look pretty easy there on the opening drive. Way too easy, right? If Michigan State, you know, that's not a good sign if there's going to be people that wide open and then, of course, going to lose the line of scrimmage battle in the run game. They got to win one of those areas. This one in the direction of Tyrell Henry, but it'll go for a touchback. The big play on that drive, Chris, was the very first play from scrimmage. First play. First off, you see two deep safeties. They're going to rotate this way. We're going to get a little out route. You're going to get McMillan on the corner route. Tatum right here needs to stay in his deep third. But for some reason, you'll see 21 Dylan Tatum, he goes with the underneath route. This is cover three. He needs to be back there to scare Michael Penix Jr. off of that throw. That lets up the big play. And these are the mistakes that Michigan State cannot afford today. Such a talented wide receiving group. You leave him open, it'll cause even more problems. Noah Kim and the Spartans starting from the 25 after the touchback. The handoff goes to Nate Carter. And maybe a yard. MJ Ale and Tuli Latui Nasasoa with the stop. They got some big guys up front. You know, 68 Ali. He is 6'6, 330 pounds, and he's athletic at that too. He doesn't look 330. But you can see right away the speed and size advantage for Washington is apparent. Saw the numbers for Noah Kim, who gets better as the game goes along. That was certainly the case last week. That is a great grab by Trey Mosley, just able to get the fingertips around it. Goes for a five-yard gain. Great throw right there by Kim. Braylon Trice, number eight, the best defense alignment on this Washington football team. He got right in the face of Kim as he was throwing the football. And I know that ball hit the ground there, but he had control. So that will be a catch. Trey Mosley, the new number one receiver here for the Spartans as the whistles come and they're gonna take a look at this. Yeah, it's, it's it's the right thing. Give it a look. I mean, I'm still shocked they didn't look at the, <laughs> the, the, the easiest fumble we've seen in college football this year. But yeah, here again, I think the big thing is the ball can hit the ground. The ball just can't assist in the reception itself. And I think here we get a catch by Trey Mosley, and then the ball just drags along the ground a little bit. I expect this to stand. Pretty good look at it. Gets the fingers around it. The ball yeah, drags it on the grass. We've got Reggie Smith at our disposal. At our disposal, uh, <laughs> let's bring in Reggie. Uh, Reggie, it's, it's a tough play when the ball hits the ground, but your take on it. Absolutely. For the receiver to complete all of the requirements of a catch, he must first secure control and then possession and then demonstrate that he can do a move common to the game. The ball is allowed to hit the ground, as Chris noted. However, it appears that he demonstrates control while going to the ground. He survives it, and he should be, it should be able to you know, be confirmed as a catch. 
And you're not disposable, Reggie. Yeah, you're, no, I'm you're the man. <laughs> I'm disposable out of this group, okay? I think I proved that I'm the disposable one here. We're going to need you a lot today. Yeah, we're on the third drive of the game. We've got a Reggie twice already. So it's <laughs> stay pretty amazing. Stay close. Reggie's like us has to be as in, in shock with that first one. The ruling of a completed pass stands. Third down. The pass is complete. It's a five-yard game, but we talked about the quarterback, Noah Kim, getting better as these games went along. Last week, in the game against Richmond, started 0 for 3, 3 for 7 in the first quarter, and then 15 for 15 the rest of the way, a school record. Accuracy, he does have that. He's got great mechanics throwing the football. He's not going to wow you with a powerful arm, but he knows where to put it. Everybody pointing fingers and jumped, and it looked like the left tackle, Brandon Baldwin, may be the guilty party. A late shift by Washington made him nervous. Ball start. Offense number 53. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So the redshirt junior, Brandon Baldwin. You see, I used to hate when defenses do that. They yell out something loud to try to make that happen, and then shift real violently, hoping an offensive lineman will get a little nervous in their stance. They're coming. They back off here. The pass is complete to the tight end, Malik Carr. And it's a five-yard game. Well, without the penalty, that would have been a first down. Again, like we said on the first drive, they're not made for four, third and eight, third and ten. Uh, they need to keep it in third and four, third and five. And that favors Michigan State. But here we are, they're punting the ball, and Washington should get the ball back in pretty good field position again, Brendan. Well, Barnett, the acting head coach, looking on as Ryan Eckley's out for his second punt of the day. It's a good one that'll send McMillan back to the 16-yard line and a quick tackle. 51-yard punt. And a nice job by Charles, or excuse me, by Brown with the tackle. So Washington and Michael Penix Jr. get their second chance on offense. Already up by seven here in the first quarter. Big Ten Saturday is brought to you by Geico. It's easy to Geico. Michigan State hosting a top 10 team, number eight Washington in town. Student section is packed here at Spartan Stadium, but there is a lot of purple scattered around the stadium. There is. There is a lot of purple scattered around the town here, and uh, they got to be excited what they've seen here early on. Yes, and Mark D'Antonio is back on the sideline as well, if you couldn't tell. Here's the second offensive possession for Michael Penix Jr. to throw to the sideline over there near Rome Odunze, and he is able to haul it in for nine. Uh, you know, that just shows you the talent of Michael Penix Jr. right there. Running to the right, eight or nine yard out route on the money, doesn't flinch. That, that's not easy. As a fellow lefty, I could tell you, I'd rather run to the left and do that than the right. Put the throw on the money. There he is on second down, right back to Odunze, and he's taken out of bounds at the 33 yard line, a gain of eight and a first down. That's where he's dangerous, Brendan. He just, he'll be patient too. Yeah, he wants the big shot down the field, but if it's not there, he's smart and he'll go underneath. Three for three to start for 55 yards for Penix. And here comes some more motion. I love their offense. It's one of the best offenses in college football. Offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb, I love all the stuff he does pre-snap. This time they'll pitch it off for Dylan Johnson. And he just bulldozes his way through for a gain of six before he ran into Simeon Barrow. You know, those shifts are great things for a quarterback, the offense. It gives them an advantage, right? We talked about this a lot during the week. It makes the defense communicate. It's young kids, their rules change on the fly. And, of course, Washington, their offense, they know what they're doing. And if you can't communicate quickly and all be on the same page, they will expose you at some point. Odunze in motion. Hand it off again. And Dylan Johnson 
close to a first down. Dylan Tatum able to stop him, but it is a first down for Washington. So they come back to Dylan Johnson. Will Nixon was the featured back last week in the absence of Dylan Johnson, a transfer from Mississippi State. He had a good workout before the game last week against Tulsa. They decided he's not quite 100%. Smart. We're going to back it off here. We don't need him this week. We might need him next week, and they've used him quite a bit here in the opening quarter. Yeah, that's right. Have the big picture in, 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 your, in your mind there, and I think that was a smart play by the Washington coaching staff. Started six games last year for Mississippi State. His Penix back to pass plenty of time. Flag on the play as he goes out into the flat, and then making a man miss on the cut. And continuing on through before he's tossed down to the turf by Aaron Brule, a 22-yard gain for Johnson. I think we're going to get a holding call here, though. We'll see. Holding. Offense number 55. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So it's Troy Fautanu. The left tackle call for the hold. Nice starting at that position for the second straight year, his fifth year in the program. He's he's a phenomenal football player. I mean, th this is a guy that's going to get drafted high in the NFL draft. I'm not sure he'll be a left tackle in the NFL. He might be a guard. He kind of lacks the length that they always love about left tackles. But man, he is really good for this Washington football team. Will Nixon now in it running back. And he gets the carry. Nixon. Out to about the 38-yard line, a gain of four. So far, Michigan State is playing pass defense on every play. They're worried about the pass game. The safeties are deep, right? So for now, Washington's trying to get them to inch up closer, run the football. We'll see how long this lasts. Get this one in the hands of Nixon with a full head of steam, and he's taken down by Charles Brantley, just shy of midfield. And it'll bring up third at about six. Just another great quarterback play by Penix Jr. Though they were, they're trying to attack down the field over the middle. He doesn't like what he sees, and as we've stated already, he is capable of being patient, taking the underneath, and letting his guys do the work after the catch. We'll call it third and five from the 49 of Washington. Confusion on the Michigan State defense. Play clock running down. They just get it off. No, they didn't. Ball start. Offensive of 71. Five yard penalty. Third down. Instead, it's a false start by Nate Kalepo. Uh, I honestly think the confusion of Michigan State kind of confused Washington, and that took them a little bit. Wait, what are they playing as they were trying to check to their offensive play? It took a little too long, and now they got them in third and ten. Washington playing without their starting center, Mateo Mele. They've had to rearrange their interior offensive line most of last week and so far this week. And again, the whistles come. Call timeout. Timeout. Washington, their first to the half. Timeout on the field. DeBoer takes his first timeout before third and ten. Loud here in East Lansing. If there is an award watch list, you can just assume Michael Penix Jr. is on it. Not a bad bet for the Heisman, too. That's right. He'd be number two on my, in my betting list, I can tell you that much. I think him and Caleb Williams are both phenomenal, the two best college quarterbacks for, for my money. And this offense and these receivers he's got around him are going to help that. Big play for Michigan State's defense here, third and ten for Washington. Penix with time down the middle of the field, might be intercepted. It went through the hands of Jalen McMillan and into the hands of Amorion Smith, but they've called it incomplete on the field. Well, Pennix Jr., he's got time in the pocket, you see. Gets it out, gets his arm hit. I didn't see that live. So that's what affected the football from fluttering up in the air a little bit, just sailing out of the reach of Jalen McMillan. Number 19 of Michigan State is now number 
Right idea, right place to go with the football there. Just the protection failed Penix Jr. just a little bit there. And Simeon Barrow with the pressure. Pass is incomplete. And Washington will have to punt it away. And they never got the playoff. Another delay of game, or at least this is a delay of game penalty. Last one was called a false start. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. This is an important sequence for this Michigan State defense. A hundred percent. I think that that sequence right there gave the fans belief a little bit and gives the defense belief that, okay, Penix Jr. and Washington are just going to march up and down the field on us today. Jack McAllister wants it away. Tyrell Henry got buried just as he took a step. 32 yards punt. Carson Bruner able to get down there to green up. Noah Kim get another chance here in the first quarter down by seven. This is Harlan Barnett leading his Spartans out onto the field for the first time as a head coach. He acknowledged this is a job he's always wanted. Obviously didn't want it under these circumstances, but still for the 56-year-old, a special moment taking his team out onto the field. And he's had some good guys to learn from Chris over his career as a player and certainly under Mark D'Antonio. Their long-standing relationship. Noah oh, Kim and the Spartans offense back on the field after a stop against Washington. They take their first deep shot, and it draws a flag. They were looking for Jerron Glover, and Elijah Jackson in coverage draws the penalty. Pass interference. Defense number 25. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, Brendan, what did I say to you during the break? You said first or second down, they're going to take a shot. They got to. Right now, not, they got, they've done nothing to get Washington on their heels. Everything's been downhill, crowd the line of scrimmage, stop the running game, four and five yard throws. They got to, you know, infuse some play action pass and some shots down the field. Fifth penalty today already against Washington. You mentioned just two and two weeks prior to this one as a four yard gain for Carter. What you see right there, there was the benefit of the shot down the field. They played too deep and ran the ball. Quickly to the line of scrimmage, Kim to throw it again, and he threw it behind his intended target, Trey Mosley. Yeah, Mosley fell down as he was making the break. I like the tempo. I like all of that. It's a nice little change up here. You know, getting back to Harlan, Harlan Barnett and what you showed there, hey, his big thing is physicality, right? You showed those list of coaches, Dungy, Belichick, Saban, Parcells. That's all they believe in. And, of course, that's what he believes in as a football coach, and you see that here on this Michigan State team. Kim to throw again, and it's intercepted. Mish Powell with the interception for Washington. Playing that Husky position, just sitting right in the middle of the field. Ball player. He's instinctive. He knows his job, but he has a great feel, and the coaches told us this yesterday, he has a great feel for what the offenses are trying to do. They run a little double slant concept here. He's all over it. He sees the quick drop of the quarterback, and he goes, I know where he's going with this ball. I'm going to cut this receiver off. Does a great job getting the interception. And this is what's... A little scary with these short throws sometimes. The risk-reward is sometimes not worth it for a quarterback, and they can be very tight throws just for a four-yard gain. So Michael Penix Jr. starting on the Spartan 44. Time downfield for Polk, and he got it! Jalen Polk down to the six-yard line. Another explosive play. This goes for 37. They're unreal. I mean, they got four or five receivers that are all going to play in the NFL. All 6-1, all 6-2. There was a flag on the play for a holding. They have declined that penalty to this stance. Incredible pass protection. And then Penix Jr., they Lock love over. to throw Please these. the game clock to two minutes and ten seconds. Deep crossers, deep posts. And the one thing I feel very confident in saying about Michael Penix Jr. is I think he's the best deep ball thrower in college football. He can throw it high, and he lets the receivers run under it and go get it. Empty backfield. Jeremy Bernard again. 
Can he get in again? This time he stopped at the five. Jaden Mangum stops his former teammate. You know, Jeremy Bernard, this is not a disgruntled freshman that ended up playing time, wanted to go somewhere else. This is a guy who wanted to go to Washington, originally signed with Washington. They were going through their own coaching change. He got released from his national letter of intent by Galen DeBoer. And then DeBoer said, look what our offense can do last year. And that, Jeremy that, Bernard back that from Washington. <laughs> He's from Vegas. He's a West Coast guy. And they dump it off here into the tight end, Jack Westover. And he makes his way into the end zone for a touchdown. They got so many weapons, so much versatility on the offense. And see, that's what the run game's going to help them with. Little play action fake, motion going one way, and now the tight end sneaks out behind the line of scrimmage. There's just a lot to defend. The talent's good, and the moving parts before and after the snap is very NFL-like for this Washington offense. The extra point is good after a low snap. But they gave him a short field, 44 yards, took just three plays after the interception to put it in the end zone. The finishing touches from Jack Westover, who we talked to yesterday, never played high school football. Just tells you what kind of athlete he is. Never played high school football. Let, he goes, let, I just figured, let me try it out and see if I can play football. Oh, yeah, no biggie. Let me just see if I can go to the Division I Washington Huskies and play tight end. I've never tried it. Yeah, he does it pretty well. Grew up a Husky fan, wanted to go to Washington, did. He only played two games of high school football. Got hurt, and that was it. Walked on to the field, and now here he is as a senior playing in his 40th career game today, and he's got a touchdown to go along with it. We know they want to throw and the receivers and all that, but again, the versatility of what they do, and have they will put two tight ends on the field. They're not afraid to throw out of those sets. Of course, run, keep them into blocks so they can take shots down the field. They really give you a lot to defend. And, and really, what a, we didn't get to talk about this. What a great catch by Jalen Polk yes. on the big throw on that last drive. Gets hit as soon as he catches it. Good strong hand, secures the ball. And of course, that was the big play that set up the touchdown. And he knows he's going to get popped. He knew it. Yeah. Exactly right. And that ain't easy. I really, as a quarterback, really enjoyed studying this Washington offense. And of course, it's always fun when you got an awesome quarterback like Michael Penix Jr. dishing the ball out all over the field. But it's a complex offense with a star quarterback and one of the more talented wide receiver rooms in the country. That's right. And then a good pass protecting O line to go with it. Yeah, that's right. Good luck defending it. So, yeah, we just mentioned everybody on the offense. <laughs> <laughs> this one will go out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Noah Kim will get started at the 25 yard line coming off the interception that he threw. That was not only his first interception of the season, first time he's turned the ball over on the year. Made his first start week one. Five touchdowns, no interceptions coming into this game, completing 68% of his passes. But he's a guy that's been with the program long enough, never played for him, but originally recruited by Mark D'Antonio, who's back on the sidelines here today. Yeah, he, he's, he's a Spartan through and through. And this is a big drive for this Spartan offense. You know, the, running the ball, we know that. They got to keep pace with this offense, and they're not necessarily real explosive. They're going to hand it off here. And tripped up after just two yards. Was Nate Carter. Braylon Trice was able to get him down to the turf. They really only have two guys, in my opinion, that can go above and beyond what the offense asks. One is five, Nathan Carter, who we just saw kind of uh, limp out the field a little bit. But then Malik Carr, number six, the tight end. He'll be on the bottom of your screen in the slot here. He's a guy that's a phenomenal NFL pro prospect. Kim to pass, complete to Henry. Down the sideline, bumped out of bounds. Marked out at the 42-yard line, a gain of 18. Well, they bring a little nickel blitz off the edge right where Noah Kim throws the ball. And the corner playing soft, trying to protect the blitz behind it. Doesn't come off the receiver. Good job finding the receiver in the flat and getting the completion. Tyrell Henry, the sophomore, 
Had a couple of catches on the season, none of them last week. Long one here as they pitch it to Jordan Simmons. Gets a couple. Jordan Simmons, ball carrier. Well, Michigan State's already banked up at the running back position. The first quarter ends with Jordan Simmons. Into the game for Nate Carter. Well, Michigan State thought they had momentum for a minute there, but an interception leads to a touchdown. 14-0 Washington after one quarter of play. It's Big Ten Saturday night. Syracuse, Purdue, tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on NBC. And Peacock, here comes Saturday night. We'll catch you, too. Big Saturday night on the Peacock. That's right. Got a big one down in Purdue, the house that Drew Brees built. Mark D'Antonio acknowledged here in between the first and second quarter back on the sidelines, not wearing a headset, but as an associate head coach, the winningest head coach in program history. And a nice little security blanket for Harlan Barnett in his first game as a head coach. That's right. It's good to have him in there for sure. You think back on that first quarter and a 14-0 Washington lead. What are you taking away? Well, there's no respect right now for the Michigan pass offense. That's what. I, look at the safeties. They're eight and nine yards, and you're going to see a rotation to make an eight-man eight, eight front as soon as the ball snapped. But the free safety, who usually would play 15, 18 yards deep, he's eight, nine yards deep. And that's why I keep saying I would love to see some play action by this Michigan State offense on first and second down. I think it's one of the things they do best, and in my opinion, they don't do it quite enough. Washington ran 14 plays in that first quarter for 141 yards. Michigan State has run 15 plays, a total of 37 yards in that first quarter. All the people in the box, three man-to-man -man right here. Again, lack of respect. Throwing on second and eight to the sideline. High throw, hauled in. Jerron Glover, did he get a foot down? Complete pass. Give him 11. Well, they actually dropped out and played coverage uh, to go against my point I was showing there. And that was a really good throw by Kim to get that up and over Powell. And a great catch and a toe tap to get it in for the first down. Wasn't sure he got it in, but that left foot came down just in bound. Nate Carter back into the game. That's good news for Michigan State. And they give him the football. Carter, a nice ball and bounce to the outside, tracked down from behind by Jabbar Muhammad. But a nine-yard gain for Nate Carter. He's They're going to need him today. They are. They're going to need him. They're going to need him to make runs like that. He's got great feet. You can see that, and then the ability to bounce it outside and make something happen. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage, and Kim overthrows his man, Antonio Gates Jr., the closest to it. Malik Carr was in the neighborhood, and if you throw it in the neighborhood of Malik Carr, that's a good spot to throw it to. He's one of those that even when he's covered, he's not covered. Now, you know, at what point maybe at Michigan State do you want to slow this down? Well, I'm a little surprised they continued with the tempo here, but they obviously think it gives them an advantage. And here they are in third and short. Hopefully they can get the first down. Oh, the box on third and one. They just push this one forward with Kim. It's a first down. Tight end Evan Morris got that push across. The push push. Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. This is the new thing. Just get a bunch of people by the quarterback and mash it in there. The six foot five, 245 pound tight end helping it through. Guiding him through. Guiding him through, right. Bear hugging him and pushing him and helping tackle him yep. to the first down. <laughs> Needed a yard, they got it. First and 10. From the Washington 34, off play action over the middle and all the way through. Looking for Christian Fitzpatrick, almost found Jabbar Muhammad instead. I like the idea, I do. I, th I think if he has his back, he doesn't throw the post route and maybe throws the in cut to the right. But this is what I like to see. Again, the safeties are squatting. And you can see there you get, they get behind the safeties. It just wasn't a great throw and it was a good job by Muhammad making it competitive. Noah Kim, 5 for 11. 
on the day. Second and ten. Ken looked like he was going to run, then he tried to hit Carter out of the backfield and overthrew him. Hey, Carter got all turned around and is slow to get up. Creative play. I like the little wrinkle. Fake the run, have pulling guards. Looks like it's going to be the quarterback run. And then he pulls up and tries to throw to the ball. The, the, the tailback coming out of the backfield. Just a little off target with it. So third and ten. They'll check in the sideline. Play clock inside ten. Down to five. They get the playoff. Kim with time. Nothing there, and he goes down again. Tupuola Fatui with the sack. Cost him seven yards on the play. The protection wasn't bad. The big problem was nobody was open. And Kim saw that. So then he panicked a little bit. And you could see the Huskies defensive line, they have surrounded the quarterback there, kind of pushing the pocket, collapsing it around him. And Tupa Ola Fatui does a great job bringing down Kim. Kim ran right into him. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he was coming right yeah, for him. That was an easy one. But that seven yards pushes the ball back to the 41 and brings the punt team out onto the field. Maybe a chance for a long field goal without it. And this is a fair catch signal for by McMillan, but he moves out of the way and it's down inside the five at the four yard line. Nicely done by Ryan Eckley. 36 yards and a long field for Michael Penix Jr. Michael Penix Jr. representing the Southpaws down on the field. We got our own lefty quarterback up here in the booth, and Chris Sims. Uh, not a whole lot of you out there, Chris. It's unbelievable. And hopefully we can unpack this a little bit as the game goes on. But yeah, we're a dying breed in the NFL, and as you can see, only 33 ever appeared in an NFL game. So it is different, and hopefully we'll talk about some of these nuances as we go on. Husky starting from the five-yard line. Penix gonna take a shot down the field, looking for Odunze, and he hauled it in. Rome Odunze with Charles Brantley all over him, 50 yards. The, see, this is again, goes back to all the things they can do. We know they wanna throw it deep, but how they do it? They're backed up, what do we do? Let's keep a bunch of people in the block. A seven-man protection, so the quarterback feels comfortable, and then Odunze, at 6'3", 215, goes up and gets the 50-50 ball. Strong hands. That's the Official third passing play. Injury. Michigan State, number zero, must go out to be checked. So the St. Charles Brantley needs to get off the field. He was the one in coverage on this play as Derek Harmon came in on Michael Penix Jr. Yeah, Michael Penix Jr. only threw the ball 60 yards off his back foot there with somebody in his face. No big deal. That's where he is. He's special that way, and that's why he's going to be a top 10 pick in the NFL draft next year. But again, the offense, the formations, two tight ends to the left with the three receivers to the left. So you had five eligibles over there. And then they keep one in to block, the running back check. So it's a seven-man protection. You're backed up. Now your quarterback feels comfortable in the back or in the end zone, his own end zone, and he lets it fly to one of his best and biggest targets he's got on this team. Yeah, Romo Dunze, 2022 first team all Pac-12, third team All-American, a three-year starter. Led the Pac-12 in receiving yards last year. More than 1,100 of them. Penix, open over the middle, Jalen Polk. He's down inside the 30-yard line by Jaden Mangum. Michigan State, I understand. They're trying to die a slow death. They're hoping that they can just keep these receivers in front of them for the most part and hope that Washington will make a mistake or their pass rush gets there. But as we've said a few times before, you know, Washington's comfortable making it a slow death. And if they have to throw it underneath, they will. And lefty's got some arm angles to work with, too. We've seen it on this drive. Penix, that one is bad. And in the air, and it's still a completion. Jalen Polk able to run underneath it and get all the way down for a touchdown. Not exactly how they drew it up, but effective nonetheless. 
It was tipped by Jordan Hall. And it was taken the rest of the way by Jalen Polk. It's a 35-yard strike for a touchdown. Jordan Hall does a great job getting a hand on it. Penix actually did not make a great decision. Should have let that guy clear Hall, and then he was going to be wide open. But, man, when you're hot, you're hot. Washington's living right. Ball, ball falls right into Jalen Polk's hand, and he does a great job after the catch being physical, getting the end zone. So on what is not one of his best decisions, he gets his second passing touchdown today. And the extra point. Is good and it is a 21 nothing lead a drive that started on their own five yard line went 95 yards Penix was three for three on the drive and the Washington Huskies have opened up a 21 nothing lead on the Spartans here in East Lansing Ryan Grubb was Kalen DeBoer's first hire after his name head coach at Washington. He's built this offense, Chris, for explosive plays, and we're seeing him here in the first half. He's, he's special. I, I loved meeting with him yesterday, talking to him. I mean, he's got a lot of answers and the right ideas. And, of course, I was fortunate to be coached by some really smart people in the NFL, and I went, this guy's smart. He knows what he's doing. In fact, he's so smart, I'm not sure he's going to be at Washington real long, honestly. Okay, but, he, you know, Michigan State, they're playing conservative on defense between the pass protection and the big arm of Penix. It's opening up the field and almost becoming one-on-ones downfield. Henry took it out of the end zone on the kickoff, made it as far as the 15 before he was taken down. And so Noah Kim in this Spartan offense has to try and get something going. He's thrown for 47 yards. Carter has six runs for 17 yards on the day so far. Yeah, not the stat line they wanted. And uh, specif specifically, Noah Kim, the interceptions, okay, 5 for 12, not a great completion percentage. But I think they were hoping to get a little bit more out of the run game. I do think Michigan State thought they had a chance to push around this Washington front, but we haven't really seen that yet. And they're going against a depleted Washington secondary as well. They're missing three members of their secondary out with injuries today. Asa Turner, Carmen Fabiculan, and, and Devon Banks are all out for Washington's defense today. That's just a one-yard carry. Gino Vandemark. A little banged up. The right guard, speaking of depleted again, Nick Samak is back for his second week, a full participant at center, but Gino Vandemark at right guard. Replaced by Kevin Wigington for the moment. Vandemark's a Jersey guy like us, yeah, Brendan. That's right. Went to St. Joe's, one of the powerhouses in North Jersey high school football. And they're nice enough to replace him with Kevin Wigington, who is also a Jersey guy. Not a Colts neck, though. Not up north. <laughs> There's Noah Kim. He'll slide down. It's where he starts his slide, and he was well shy of that first down marker. Credit with a five-yard gain. Yeah, I think this is, you know, something that's impressive about his game is he can tuck it, run, be dangerous. You know, he's quick. He is fast. As you can see, he's not real big. But I would think that's going to have to continue, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a few quarterback design runs in the game plan as we, we go forward as well. Third and four. Kim looking complete right at the first down marker, and Mosley able to slip free for an extra few. I think it's going to come back, though, because we're going to have an illegal formation by Michigan State. They actually stole the formation from Washington and went five el eligibles to one side, and I'm going to bet that somebody was on the line of scrimmage that should not have been. A frustrating start for Harlan Barnett so far. They convert on the third down, and the worry is it's coming back. But a long conversation here before we get the ruling. Illegal formation. Offense, more than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. It'll be third down. 
after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number zero, his first of the game. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Still third down. We only got six guys on the line of scrimmage. There's got to be seven guys on the line of scrimmage. So I don't know if the tight end should have been off and somebody else should have been on, but that was the illegal formation. It was a nice play by Kim. He had protection. It was a good call by offensive coordinator Jay Johnson, but just mistakes shooting themselves in the foot. How about that swing, though? Then they get Alante Brown for unsportsmanlike conduct. And so instead of converting on third down, they're now facing a third down all the way back inside their 10-yard line. Third and 17. They hand it off to Simmons, and he's got nowhere to go, and Michigan State's going to have to punt the football. Just four yards, Void Tunuufi with the tackle of Simmons, who is the exclusive back on that drive. This is the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Number zero. That. Oh, just not necessary. Way after the play, frustration penalty. That one is fielded on the Michigan State half of the field by Jalen McMillan. A 35 yard punt. Another short field coming up for Michael Penix Jr. Second quarter and already 204 yards for the lefty quarterback, Michael Penix Jr. We, we broached the subject earlier with the lefty, Chris Sims. What changes with a lefty quarterback? Because there aren't that many of them, so what's different for this offense because he's the quarterback? Sure, I think that the first thing is the ball does spin a different way. You know, receivers are used to seeing the ball come out of a certain side of the quarterback's body. That's different. I'll tell you more after the play. Two receivers in the backfield to start. They send Jeremy Bernard in motion. Penix. Gonna take another long throw. That's complete to McMillan. And he's out to the 30-yard line. Just another 16-yard chunk taken up. A lot of window dressing and movement and great throw by Penix Jr. But yes, it's the where the ball is coming out, the spin of the ball. Deep balls for a righty, they fall to the right. For a lefty, they fall to the left. The offensive coordinator, he's got to think about, wait, when I run bootlegs or certain protections, I got to formulate that to the lefty quarterback a little bit more. So there's a little bit of a mental gymnastics there for everybody. It's overblown at times, go but they certainly got a good one here in this guy. Looking for Bernard near the sideline, complete for another first down. 13-yard gain. Let's get down to the field for the right-handed Caroline Banana. Caroline? Yeah, Brendan. Well, I talked to wide receivers coach Demarcus Shepard before the game. He told me they used the left-handed setting on the jugs machine in practice for the receivers. But he said his message to them is, if you want to play at the next level, which they do, you could have a left or right-handed quarterback. And he said now they'll be prepared either way. It's good to know they have that extra setting on the jugs machine. Hey, right, thank you. Technology isn't totally against lefties. Nope. <laughs> what if you got to pay extra for that feature? <laughs> <laughs> they go to the sideline again. McMillan knocked out of bounds. Another six yards. Marquis Lowry knocked them out of bounds. But the march continues for the Huskies. Just such a good decision maker. Looks to the right, doesn't like it, knows exactly where he wants to go back to. The left side of the football. Finished last year as the number one passer in FBS, leading the nation. And this time, an easy pitch and catch for Jack Westover. He's got two touchdowns today. Man, we got to meet with him yesterday, and here's two TDs. Another great play design, though. Run game, three options to the left, and Westover looks like he runs like a little wheel route, basically. Goes to the flat, turns it up, gets the wide open touchdown. We don't see him in the screen here, but this is, we've seen that play action pass already. They got a lot of ways to beat you, this Washington Huskies offense. Only had one catch all last week. He's got two touchdown catches today. Talking about the wide receivers, don't forget about those tight ends. Jack Westover, two touchdowns. It's a 28-0 lead as Michigan State seemingly has no answer for Michael Penix Jr. and this Washington offense. Two touchdowns to the tight end. Three touchdowns on the day throwing 
for Michael Penix Jr. Penix Jr. has found Jack West over twice in this game. It's 28 0, just more than halfway through quarter number two. He's having a day. Yeah. Uh, I mean, throwing under pressure, making big time throws. Receivers are playing awesome. Henry. Flags come in as Henry slips through almost to the 35-yard line. And a few extra things after the play as well. There is lots of laundry down in the field. During the return, holding, receiving team number 35. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Michigan State. So attack on some yardage. Or take back some yardage, I should say. After what was a decent return for Henry. Now here we are, back at their own 12-yard line. Um, making mistakes on the scheme. Making mistakes after the whistle. Penalties everywhere. I mean, right now, Michigan State looks like a team that had a chaotic week. Arlen Barnett, the acting head coach. Didn't find out that was the case until Sunday. First time head coach as well, though a long time assistant, 15 years on the sideline, not consecutively, but here at Michigan State. For the former DB for the Spartans. Kim to throw on first down, mostly able to come back for it and make the catch. I don't think he did. I think they, they're calling it incomplete. It must have hit the ground. You're right. Yeah, it was hard to see. The ref didn't give a clear signal there. But again, that's easy pitch and catch. And that's just got to happen right there. I like the play action. I like the idea coming out. Quarterback and receiver just got to be better there. Four straight incomplete passes for Kim. Just five for 13. That time he's complete to Mosley and put his shoulder down, but he was greeted by Elijah Jackson. Six yards on that one. A little wide, re wide receiver screen to the left. They like the numbers as far as the secondary over there. Good job just getting back on track here to get the third and manageable. They're gonna Trey Mosley on back-to-back -back plays for a team that lost their Top two receivers from last year, Keon Coleman, now a member of Florida State, Jaden Reed, now a member of the Green Bay Packers. I feel like they have a deeper wide receiver core, but they're missing two top playmakers. This time, Malik Carr. Malik the Freak able to make the catch. For a first oh. down, and then a little bit too late. There we go. A little bit too extra, and the crowd will get behind that flag. Definitely going to get an unnecessary roughness call here from Washington. The result of the play is a first down. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense number 10. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Raylan Goforth gets called for the penalty. It ain't easy to tackle big number six. Malik Carr, 6'5", 260. Very athletic for his size. Yeah, actually spent some time on the Michigan State basketball team. Kim to throw, and that one is way over the head of John Glover. Yeah, some, some sort of mix up there. Had two receivers basically run into each other. An injury on the sideline. It looked like I believe the tight end Evan Morris came running off the field for Michigan State. A little banged up. Second and ten. Tim looking. Throws underneath to Carter. And Carter slipped through the first couple of tackles. Eventually brought down. Elijah Jackson had a chance at him. Alfonso Tupatala. Help bring him down after just a couple of yards. Well, I'm all about for Michigan State get the ball into five's hand as many times or as many ways as possible. That one was close right there. Uh, that was a shoestring tackle. If he didn't get 
tripped up there, he was going to have a chance to really get off to the races and, and maybe get an explosive play. That was the tight end, Evan Morris, on the sideline being worked on by the training staff. On third and eight. That one is over the head of Glover. And Kim took a shot at the end of the play as well. Washington blitzed for one of the few times they all day. Elijah Jackson, the corner, he comes off the back edge. I think Noah Kim felt that pressure coming. He realized it. And then that uh, forced him to not step into the throw the proper way. The ball sailed on him. And again, open receiver, got a chance there. You'd like your quarterback to hang in there and make the throw the right way. But it's easier said than done when you feel people bearing down on you. Michael O'Shaughnessy, the transfer from Ohio State, is out to punt it away. Sending McMillan back inside the five for the fair catch, and then he was tackled. He had a very clear signal, early signal, for the fair catch. Sur surprised he even caught it inside the five-yard line. And just in white. More Michigan not State malicious, mistakes. Not a malicious hit. No. You can't touch him. Nope. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Kicking team number 30, 15 yard penalty. First down, Washington. They were going to have him at the four yard line. Clear as day, like you said. 30, for some reason, did not see it. I don't understand that. But they got to stop these mistakes and keep giving these advantages to this Washington offense, and they don't need advantages. Penix. Heaves one over in the direction of Odunze, and there's the flag. Angelo Gross was right there with Odunze. Pass interference. Defense number 15. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's our veteran Angelo Gross on this Michigan State defense. Making his 29th career start today. And, and really, that was one of the, the worst decisions Penix Jr. has made all game. He had a guy deep open and had a guy short open, but for some reason, he kind of got locked on the target there. But fortunately for him, it was a pass interference. Play action. Penix waiting for somebody to get open. Nobody there, and he's going to scramble. And he'll throw it away. Penix is a guy who doesn't get a hit very often. He was only sacked no foul for five times all last year. He was hit fewer than 20 times last season. It's it's impressive, and it starts with these two tackles they got. You know, especially the left tackle, as we talked about earlier, he's phenomenal. And then he's what I love about him, Brendan, is he's old school. He wants to sit in the pocket and throw and carve you up. He only moves when he really has to. And you don't see that a whole lot in today's football. Empty backfield. On second and ten. Penix looking left side and Polk. Did he come down with it? He did. Or did Gross come down with it? They were jockeying for the ball. Flag is out. I believe the signal is for a catch by yep. Polk. Right, I think so. And then I think he's going to get a, a personal foul. A, a bit taunting or something after the snap here. It's going to move it back 15 yards. The result of the play is a completed pass and a first down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number two, his first of the game. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, they said defense they number meant two. offense, yeah. right? They meant offense number two. I mean, Brendan, how many times are we going to see these receivers just go up with strong hands and 50-50 balls basically become 80-90 balls? I mean, they might have been right about the defense being Correction. a necessary rough 
The unsportsmanlike conduct foul was on the offense number two. It'll be 15 yard penalty from the completed pass spot and it's still first down, Washington. But you can see Gross, he, can, he started it. Ahead of Polk, yeah. yes. Yeah. Kind of stayed on top of him, pushed his head down. He, either way, you know, great catch. And really, that was the appropriate place to go with the football. You got man to man across the board. He goes up, my guy's better than your guy. Gross is holding his head and neck. You just would like, hey, Jalen Polk, keep it cool. You got your kicking butt. Don't do that. Polk's third catch of more than 30 yards has Penix to Odunze. And he took a hit, but he made the play down to the 26-yard line. Oh, man, they're feeling it. I mean, the, well, when you're an offensive coordinator and a quarterback and you got it going like this, it's just like, hey, call every play in the playbook. It doesn't matter. It's going to work. Moving to the right. And then here's the versatility of his throwing. He's got a lot of clubs in the bag. Yeah, he could throw the fastball, but there you see a little touch ball, a little flick of the wrist, gets it up and down. And again, these awesome receivers make a strong catch. They fake it to Odunze. Oh. They throw it instead to Will Nixon. He's got a convoy. He's got a touchdown. There's a flag on the play. Would have gone for 27 if it wasn't coming back. I think, yep. They're going to get Jalen McMillan here, maybe. Number 11, the receiver. Holding. Offense, number 11. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Well, first off, I don't care that it got called back. What a cool play again. All the misdirection to set up the screen backside. I don't know. Was that holding or was that just a dominant block? That was a little bit questionable. Maybe I need to see it again, but sometimes the refs just see a guy go down in a way and they think he was held, and sometimes he's just dominated. What's Ryan Grubb got in his bag here? Oh, Pumped another screen. <laughs> to Jeremy Bernard. Bernard slipped away from one tackle. Not the second one, Aaron Brule. All that for four yards. Well, this is why yesterday I asked offensive coordinator Grubb, I said, do you have to remind yourself to run the ball every now and then? Because, like, wh why run it for four when you can do all these cool things and just throw the ball over the lot? And within their passing game, they make you defend the whole field. Oh, and Caitlin DeBoer said, hey, it's hard. When you see so many things that are just open and given into the passing game, your guys can attack and go make plays. It's not hard to keep calling them. <laughs> it's definitely not. Ball start. Offense number 55. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And Kalen DeBoer, and we've talked about him. We've talked about Ryan Grubb. Kalen DeBoer was Michael Penix Jr.'s offensive coordinator right. at Indiana. He's the architect of this offense, right? Ryan Grubb learned from him a lot of this. And it was funny, Kalen DeBoer, too, when I brought up the whole, hey, do you got to remind your offensive coordinator to run the ball a little bit? He goes, yeah, every now and then I got to tell me, hey, remember when you were an O-line coach? You didn't <laughs> like when we threw the ball every yep. play. <laughs> I love that. They got a great coaching staff with this Husky football team. In its second season. Penix going to step into one, looking for Polk downfield, tripped up on his way to the ball. No flag on the play with Marquis Lowry in coverage. Good job by Lowry there. Lowry kept the proper leverage for what his assignment was. Again, kind of a cover three there. It was a post corner route. He didn't follow the post in. See right here, doesn't follow it too aggressively. He stays on the outside. And that's what makes it a tough completion for the quarterback. What do you got for third and 20? They might block it up and throw downfield or just get a quick throw to get in field goal position. Penix thinking about running with it. He'll pull up and throw. Odunze couldn't come down with it in double coverage. Jaden Magnum came in and knocked it out. Good job by the, uh, the, the Michigan State secondary. Downfield becomes a scramble drill. They stayed on their guys. 
I don't know. I, I thought maybe Michael Penix might just run and get a few yards to help out the field goal unit. But he did have a guy bearing down on them, and now they're going to punt. Finally, we got a stop by this Michigan State defense. Comes just inside two minutes to play in the first half. Jack McAllister try and put this one in a good spot. They're caught by Tyrell Henry at the nine-yard line. It's a 28-yard punt. That'll back up Michigan State. This is the first Power 5 matchup for these teams. It's a day where we're supposed to learn a lot about both these programs. No offense to the Tulsa's and Richmond's of the world. Sure. But this is supposed to be a different test. Washington doesn't look like they're being tested all that much. I, no, they're not being tested. And in fact, I would say they, they rose to the occasion or are playing better football than they did in the first two weeks. You know, I don't know if there was the fear factor in the first two weeks like there was today a little bit on the road, hostile environment. They're on their A game. Michigan State was solid in the first two games, but there was things to look at to go, I'm not so sure it's going to translate to when they got to play one of the best teams in college football in the Washington Huskies. And I think, you know, to that point, we're, we're not seeing the answers we wanted. Kim. Pass knocked away. Looking for Glover, defended well by Thaddeus Dixon. That was one of the things that scared me about the matchup was against Central Michigan, against Richmond, this Michigan State offense, these receivers, they had a hard time separating against those teams. And of course, this is a step up as far as level of competition, the type of athlete you're seeing in this Washington secondary. And to this point in man-to-man -man situations, they're all over the Michigan State wide receivers. Mark D'Antonio looking on. Kim on second and ten. He's got time, and he's got a completion over the middle. Montori Foster Jr. took a hit for a 19-yard game. First down, Michigan State. Clock running. Good job there. Had a post. Maybe he could have thrown over the top. He didn't feel comfortable. Hits the in cut. Kim looking for him again. To back big plays for Montori Foster Jr. That one goes for 30. Great job by Kim. Montori Foster, it's a cover two look there. He acts like he's going to run the corner route and then busts back in, splits the two safeties. Good throw by Kim. Well, two minute offense here at the end of the half as Michigan State trying to get on the board. Under pressure was Kim. Had to get rid of it, and he did nicely to the sideline for Glover. Goes for six, but that was every second that Kim had to make that play. Great job by him. Uh, empty set there, all out blitz by Washington. He couldn't, they couldn't block them all. Off his back foot, makes the throw. It was one of the first times all game we saw Washington be kind of ultra aggressive with their defensive call. Sets up second and four with 60 seconds to go in the half. Kim looking for the end zone. And that was overthrown. He's looking for Foster again. Jabbar Muhammad is closer to that ball. Yeah, if you're the Washington secondary, for from this point on, it should be don't let any receiver behind us. And Muhammad, who is one of the better secondary players, I think, in the trust tree with the coaches in Washington, maybe more than anybody else, plays it the right way, stays on top of Montori Foster there. Are they going to blitz there? Oh, they made the offensive line flinch. Ball start. Offense number 59. Five-yard penalty. Third down. We'll back him up five. Third and nine instead. Third and nine, Brendan, let's see what they do here. It looked like they were gonna bring that all out blitz one more time there. Let's see if they decide to dial it up again or do something more conservative. Here, here let's see, let's check it out. Here it comes. Nope, they dropped out. And they come to the near sideline and looking for Glover again. Couldn't go up and get it. 
So on third and nine, they come up empty. Kim has not made a move towards the sideline at this point with 50 seconds to go in the half. And still a zero on the board next to Michigan State. Yeah, th this is, uh, I think, the appropriate call. I mean, it's go time. They're down 28 nothing. You want to get into the half at some point, something to go here. Your defense has not shown the ability to stop Michael Penix Jr. It doesn't matter where he gets the ball on the field. Going for it on fourth and nine. Under pressure. Flag on the play. I think we got Braylon Trice jumping off a little early there, number eight. Offside. Defense number four in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Worked out. They got the other edge. Tupuolo yep. Fatui. My bad, Mr. Trice. I didn't mean to point you out. I was wrong there. I think you were just going with Trice instead of Tupuolo Fatui. <laughs> I was, I'm definitely scared of some of the names. <laughs> So fourth and nine becomes fourth and four. Nine penalties in the first half for Washington as Kim under pressure, incomplete. And the ball going back to the dogs here with 41 seconds on the clock. Coming up on the Xfinity 10G Network Halftime Report, Washington, Michigan State will recap the first half, a primetime preview, plus Purdue's Breakfast Club. That's all coming up at halftime. Yeah, unfortunate there for Michigan State. Pressure, nobody was open really. Tried to get the ball to Malik Carr, who was covered pretty tightly, and they're gonna kneel it down here and call it a half. Washington Huskies, they go, ah, we threw the ball enough and they have enough good stats. Let's just, oh, uh -oh. hold on. <laughs> They're not going to take the knee. Uh, Jalen McMillan came out of that rushing the football. Oh, man. Ryan Grubb, <laughs> he's a sneaky one. Let me tell you, every week I see trick plays. He told me they kind of practice them all year long. So it's kind of always ready to be dialed up. Oh, and here we go. They're, they're, they're unbelievable. Now they're going to spread it out and let the lefty sling it. 36 seconds for Michael Penix Jr. Remember, this is about to become a Big Ten matchup. It isn't quite yet, but it will be next year. Penix looking long, and he got it complete to McMillan. That's why I was a little surprised they were going to kneel the ball down. I was just going, well, this is a good chance for them to make some big plays, work yep. on their two-minute offense here. But McMillan's down. Kind of looked like the defender fell on his leg a little bit here. Oh, yeah. Right leg got kind of smushed back up into his body. Watch as he goes up. Oh, groin maybe something along those lines, but he's certainly a little uncomfortable right now. Mm, might have been the knee. Malik Spencer was turned around and then tried to make up for it. And yeah. Yep. So McMillan still down on the sideline, the Washington sideline. Yeah, that left leg just got caught in a weird spot. Hopefully he's okay. He gets up, but he needs some help. And that is not what you want to see. It was a, it was a great route. Ran ri basically a deep out and up, Brendan. And then, yep. of course, it was an on-the-money throw. 27 seconds left and a fresh set of downs for Penix. That one incomplete in the direction of Romo Dunze. Some pressure from Brandon Wright. Michigan State switched the last few plays here to two man, where basically they're playing two safeties way back and then man to man underneath with everybody else. They get a little pressure. Receivers, nobody was really open, and Penix kind of has to just throw it away. It's one of the few times they've hit him. And a timeout call timeout. here. Michigan State, their second Michigan and a half. 30 second in length. 
So a timeout taken by Michigan State on defense, just 20 seconds left before halftime. Trying yeah. to limit the damage. Yeah, uh, the, the big play to McMillan, of course, jump-started things here. And again, it just I, I love the, the design, the play call, and of course a lot of it is because your quarterback, the protection, but two-man, he runs out to the sideline, they get the corner to kind of bite on it, and then he turns up the field and again makes the big catch but as you can see he's going to the locker room and he's uncomfortable and here's the route just to just show it see there's two men he goes out he goes up and Penix Jr. has all day Penix Odunze makes a man miss Odunze pushed out of bounds near the five yard line they're going to mark him out at the seven. Well, as good as Jalen McMillan is, the one thing that Husky fans can feel good is you, you got a whole bunch of other guys that are awesome. And, and that's one of them right there. Odunze is a physical specimen, 6'3", 215, and you see there, just catches the ball, and he's a man after the catch. Talking to the coaches yesterday, they said if they didn't have other guys on this team, you'd be talking about Denzel Boston, who hasn't even touched the ball yet today. That's how deep they are in this wide receiver room. Penix surveys the scene right up the gut. Down near the goal line. Touchdown. Westy again. <laughs> Jack Westover, his third receiving touchdown today. You worry about all these receivers. They didn't think they were going to have to worry about Jack Westover today. And I think he got in. And he rolled over the Michigan State defender. And again, just a great read by Penix Jr., Brendan. His patience, again, the time in the pocket. You see, kind of just finds the soft spot. Westover finds the soft spot in the coverage, and Penix Jr. puts it on him, touchdown. Jack Westover having himself a half. The former walk-on with three touchdowns in the opening half. And they've hung 35 up on Michigan State. Love it. Little three-quarter release, like you said earlier. The Penix Jr.'s got a lot of different launch points. He can throw off the back foot on the run. And then you couple that with... I would be hard-pressed to think that there's a more creative offense in college football than Washington right now. And then, as we've just over and over again talked about the receiving core, it's just too much for, for Michigan State to handle right now. They're outmatched in a, in a lot of different ways here in the first half. 35 seconds down the field. Penix is 20 for 25 for 375 yards and four touchdowns before half. Is that good? I think so. <laughs> Lefties. <laughs> We're talking about Westover and his touchdowns. Polk's gone for 113 yards, Odunze for 113 yards, and McMillan, who limped off the field, uh, 96 yards on his four catches. Wow. Uh, it's, they're explosive. And the only thing I'm worried about now is that we might not get to see Penix Jr. the whole second half. You know, at some point here, this could get out of hand. I want to see him because I'm really enjoying watching him play. He caught my eye last year. In fact, it was it was my dad who first kind of throw him on. Big Phil Sims is, you know, <laughs> Big Phil we call him in our household. Hey, Christopher, have, have you, this Penix Jr., he can really throw it. Have you really seen him? And I was like, yeah, I kind of remember him from Indiana. And I caught a few games on TV late in the year, and I went, oh, man, this guy's coming out in the draft. He's going to be a top 10 pick. He decided to stay. He's still going to be a top 10 pick. Probably a top five or three pick, really. Yeah, my question was going to be, surprised he's even here. And exactly. I think we got your answer. Yes. Uh, that will be the last play. That's the end of the first half. Of the first half as Michael Penix Jr. and the Washington Huskies flexing their muscles here at Spartan Stadium. And the points were towards the purple shirts in the crowd. Yes, it's uh, 
Michigan State's going to have to go in and totally revamp the game plan, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They tried to be conservative and keep the ball in front of them, but that, it's not going to work because of the time he has, Penix Jr., and even though they're playing conservative coverages, because the offense is so creative, they're just gashing the secondary and spreading them out like we're seeing, and it's becoming one-on-ones way down the football field. Tough start for Harlan Barnett, who's the acting head coach here for Michigan State. This week, let's send it down to the field. Caroline Pineda with Kellen DeBoer. Caroline? Coach, we just saw your receiver, Jalen McMillan, suffer an injury. Do you have an early update on his status? I, I think he'll be all right. You know, I don't think it's anything serious. Your quarterback, Michael Penix Jr., you described him as explosive yesterday. You're up 35 to nothing. How much will we see him in the second half? Yeah, I mean, we want we get the ball to start, to, and, uh, you know, we'll uh, see what we can do here right off the bat. But obviously, we got to be smart. I'm um, proud of the way he's come out and just continue to keep the pedal down and uh, find ways to get completions and score. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Well, he's got a game's worth of stats already heading into the locker room at halftime. 375 yards and four touchdowns for Michael Penix Jr. as Michigan State will spend halftime searching for answers. They've had no answers so far for this Husky offense. Up 35-0 at the break in East Lansing. There's Jalen McMillan. He's on the sideline. He did not come onto the field and play in that first offensive possession to start the half. But he's on the sidelines. He's still got his pads on. No need for him here. That's right. Good, you know, good to see him out there. I think that's a good sign that tells you it's nothing real serious. A tweak, a sprain, whatever. You know, maybe he misses another game, but it doesn't look like it's going to be season ending. It was an eight-play, 66-yard drive that ended in a field goal as that one was grabbed by Henry. Is he out of the one? Well, he tried to step out and touch the ball, but could have made it out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds from the one yard line. First down, Michigan State. Uh, we got to see if he stepped out first and then got possession. Because if he did that, then it will be an illegal kick out of bounds, and they'll get the ball at the 40 yard line. Oh, it's close. You can tell what he was trying to do. Right. Let's bring in. Reggie Smith for his take on that play where it's close right there near the sideline. Well, this is yet another tight play. However, if they take a look at this and determine that he's airborne and subsequently carries the ball out of bounds, this will be sufficient for a kick out of bounds. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, I thought his toe might have hit the ground before he caught the ball. And here they're going to look at it, hopefully. They deserve, this deserves a closer look. Timeout, Michigan State, their first of the half. Well, they're not reviewing so. it yet. We saw this not happen during the first half as well. Timeout, timeout is just to give them a chance to take a look at it. Right, that's, what, that, that's really what Michigan State's doing here in Harlan Barnett. He's trying to buy a little time, hoping that the replay review will kick in here and give it another chance. All right, so our rules analyst, Reggie Smith, what are we looking for with the feet here? Well, what we're looking for is to see whether his feet are established out of bounds prior to him touching. Obviously, touching precedes possession and control, but when he touches the ball, it appears that his right foot may be out of bounds already, but what we cannot tell is whether the left foot sort of drags or dots the eye. In this angle here, it looks like the left foot doesn't quite come down in bounds. I'm with you, Reggie. I think this right foot got down before he touched the ball. It wasn't by a lot, but just barely, which would make him out of bounds and therefore make the kick out of bounds. That and is again, correct, and that would put it at the 35-yard line. Michigan State has challenged the ruling of the out-of-bounds spot. That play is under review. Again, they did not review it. We're reviewing it already. They have not reviewed this play yet, and it didn't look like they were going to until it was challenged by Harlan Barnett. Yeah, it's it's the appropriate thing here to do by Harlan Barnett. It, it is. It, it's, it's they're down 38 nothing. He does not want to sit here and start the 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 second half on the one yard line. They're trying to get some mojo going here, get a little momentum and some positivity here. It's very close, but I do I do think that right toe. 
right foot touch the ground before he touches the ball, even though it is really close. Replay official for the game today, Terry Layden. Is now deliberating over this play. It's either Michigan State ball at their own one, or the ball will come out to 40, the 40 for a kick out of bounds. Pretty significant determination. It is, it is. And, and no, I think I said 40 before. I think it's 35 oh, now. Right. Yep. I stand corrected. I led you down that wrong path there. Right How ahead. dare I? <laughs> Sorry, I'm from New Jersey and I'm blonde, and sometimes I'm a <laughs> little off on my counting and stuff. So they are taking a look at this to determine whether or not it's a kick out of bounds. As Michigan State looks for something to build off of here and kind of giving them a little buffer between the line of scrimmage in the end zone could certainly help them in that regard. But so far, Harlan Barnett and the Spartans offense haven't generated much. Noah Kim's thrown for 122 yards. Their leading rusher is Nate Carter, who's rushed for just 26 yards. Looks like this is going to go Michigan State's way. After further review, the kick was out of bounds when the receiving team touched the ball. Therefore, it's a kick out of bounds. The ball we placed at 35-yard line. First down, Michigan State. Tyrell Henry breathing a little bit easier on the Spartan sideline. Oh, that, that's State exactly has also right. Retained their challenge, and there is no timeout taken. Good challenge by Harlan Barnett there. That really was. Good for him. Good for the team. Have the offense not backed up. We know offense has been hard here. They've been dominated up front. They've had a hard time protecting, running the ball. A little breathing room here could help them. So see what Noah Kim can do here in the second half. And the ball off to Carter, and he is swallowed up in the backfield. Ooh. Big Thule, 91. He kind of busts through the line of scrimmage there. Thule, Latuli, Nasanoa. I'll just stick with Thule for now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the third year starter, and there's along Alfonso Tupatala as well, who was in there. But yeah, there's Latuli, Nasanoa. This, this is where they're, they're different. They're, they're big up front. They're athletic at the second level, and they're good in the secondary. Foster in motion. Kim just throws it away. Under pressure again. It was Latuli Nasanoa again providing the pressure. Getting good push. And, and as a quarterback, you never like any pressure on you, but when the D tackles are pushing the guards and that crew right into your face, that's actually more annoying than a Micah Parsons type guy coming around the edge. Third and 12. Kim over the middle and it's big Malik Carr who got popped after the catch, but he picks up the first down. 14 yard gain, Dominique Hampton. Lower the boom on the big man. Yeah, great job by Noah Kim hanging in there. They snapped this ball, and Washington didn't get everybody off the field in time. They were trying. Yes, they were. They had them. They caught Washington in a substitution. And I think they're going to call originally here, Berkey, a false start on Michigan State, Ooh. even though I don't know about the count of numbers on the Huskies' defense on the field there, too. They definitely still had a lineman running towards the sideline. Offense, not all players being set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. Trying to get too aggressive there. It's one of the things we questioned early on in the game, right? We said this game needed to be hold the ball, control the ball, make Michael Penix Jr. hang out by the Gatorade bottles. And I, I, that's the one thing I've questioned about the game plan with Michigan State. Why the up-tempo on the offensive side of the ball? I believe you said they needed to make it ugly, didn't you? Exactly not? right. Here's Carter. Got about two. And Dominic Hampton, a really physical, strong safety, got in there to make the stop. Oh, he's 
That's what he is. I mean, he's almost like an extra linebacker on the field, except he runs like a secondary player. And he's another guy that will play in the NFL. 220 pounds. But this is, again, what we've hit on. This is going to be a problem for Michigan State all year long when they play talented teams. Will teams respect their receivers and their passing game? Second and 13. Kim had to get rid of it, and he did. That's all he could do. There is no tension. Get rid of the football. More the pressure this time. It was Braylon Trice. Braylon Trice is a good player. And they, they're, they're very talented. And you see here as Noah Kim drops back on this replay. Yeah, you tell me at home. Pressure in his face. Is anybody really open? Absolutely not. I mean, in fact, there's two people around two of the receivers. So Washington's got a beat on this offense altogether. Braylon Trice, all Pac-12 first team last year at nine sacks. Third best in the Pac-12, and a little miscommunication there on the route with Malik Carr. Kim took a hit after he let go of the ball as well. I'm gonna bring up fourth down. Tupu Ola Fatui has been in the backfield more than anybody in this game so far. He's been really impressive. 6'4", 254, got a very good first step. This time he lined up over the nose tackle, or the center, excuse me, as the nose tackle. And he lays the hit on Noah Kim and ooh, then accidentally steps on him. So two ball of the two. Deliver the hit, brings out the punter. So Michael O'Shaughnessy, third best in the Pac-12, and a little miscommunication there on the route with Malik Carr. Kim took a hit after he let go of the ball as well. I'm gonna bring up fourth down. Tupu Ola. Fatui has been in the backfield more than anybody in this game so far. He's been really impressive. 6'4", 254, got a very good first step. This time he lined up over the nose tackle, or the center, excuse me, as the nose tackle, and he lays the hit on Noah Kim, and ooh, then accidentally steps on him. So two ball of Fatui. Deliver the hit, brings out the punter. So Michael O'Shaughnessy to Romo Dunze, who calls for the fair catch at the 16-yard line. 40-yard punt for the Michigan State punter. That is not Michael Penix Jr. Looks like Dylan Morris may take over here in the third quarter. In the world of John Wick comes a Peacock original set in 1970s New York. A young Winston Scott takes on the world's most dangerous hotel in the Continental for the world of John Wick. Three-part event begins streaming September 22nd, only here on Peacock. Look at that guy there. This is Sparta. It's a die-hard kind of game. The student section is thinned out considerably. Penix is still in the game. Ready to continue his day. Four yards shy of 400 through the air for Penix. He'll keep it on the ground, though, handing off to Tybo Rogers. The freshman gets his first carry today before he runs into Dre Butler. Well, some people at home might go, and why is he still there? Well, why? Is that worth it? I know it's 38-0, okay? But they do have the, the Pac-12 schedule coming up. Now we got a little injury on the offensive line. Julius Bulo. Left guard into the game is one on the down, being tended to by the training staff for Washington. Julius Pulo, the junior from Hawaii, big junior, 6'8", 313 pounds. That'll be helped off the field for getting his leg stuck under a pile of bodies. Second and five for Washington from their own 21. Tybo Rogers, and we started talking about it, Chris, about why Michael Penix Jr. Number is still in this game. Some of the number twos the are in. Why is Michael Penix Jr. still in this game? Well, I think the big thing is, first off, next week starts the Pac-12 schedule. They've had two games before this that they haven't played four quarters yet. They've been blown out. They've been blowing their teams out here. 
So here they are once again blowing a team out. This was supposed to be the day to, hey, we're going to get a four-quarter football game. We're going to get in football game shape and know how to execute throughout a game. Let alone, you could see they got some tough opponents up on the schedule to where they're going to be on their A game. It's not going to be like this too often with that schedule you see there. This may be the swan song for the Pac-12. Uh, they're going out with a bang, ball on the ground. Seriously, and quickly recovered. But there are some good teams in the Pac-12. Yeah, little miscommunication there on the motion, and he got in the way of the center snap. But yes, they are going out in the bank. I mean, the quality of the conference, there's a lot of good teams, and then the quarterback play. I mean, holy cow. The Pac-12 has got it all going on. They're exciting that way. So we'll see. We'll see if we see so Pettick Jr. maybe one more time. I wouldn't be shocked if we did. There you see through week two and yeah, this Pac-12 quarterbacks that includes includes Shador Sanders numbers from before today's game. They play later on tonight. That's flag, right. Flag down here on the punt return for Tyrell Henry. And he gets tackled just after crossing the 35. Solid punt, 54-yard punt, but penalty markers down. It's usually in the area of holding on one of the punt protector or you know one of the punt return protectors. Long time to figure it out. Yeah. There's three of them on the field here, so I think we got multiple. Actually there's four flags. Did you say that already? I couldn't nope. I see four now. <laughs> They keep they keep growing. Yep. Anybody throw a hat? We got anybody else down <laughs> on the field? Officials making sure they're all on the same page as Kalen DeBoer and Harlan Barnett await their findings. <laughs> Hold on. Let's double check. We got the numbers right. Illegal substitution. On the receiving team, that five-yard penalty will result in a first down by yardage. Holding receiving team number three. That penalty is declined. First down, Washington. That was Stakes. that was going to be the first three and out today by the Washington offense. Twelve people on the field. Second time today. Can't happen. Given the most explosive offense, maybe in all of college football, I mean, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I mean, it's it's 12 for sure. Ninth penalty against Michigan State here this evening. First and 10, now with the ball to 26. Penix to pass, slings it. And another good catch over near the sideline by Romo Dunze. Boy, you just got to put it somewhere near him. That's right. He, you know, that's where his size comes into play. You got to respect the deep, the deep speed a little bit. But this isn't bad coverage by Dylan Tatum. He's there. But this is when you have a really good NFL receiver and an NFL quarterback. He goes, oh, this is open. I can throw it wherever I want. You can catch it wherever you want. And that's why they're so tough to stop. Very good coverage. Dylan Tatum all over him. Yeah. Jeremy Bernard was in motion. Penix taking a shot down the right side for Odunze. Tripped up. Incomplete. Penix has a great feel of like on that play you see. Guy's not open. He kind of knows it. So he throws it right at them. Kind of a back shoulder or goes let me give you a shot to go up and make a play because his receivers are very good at adjusting the ball in the air and they're long and big like we've talked about. And that's where Penix is it's next level in some of that stuff. Quick throw this time. Jalen Polk swallowed up quickly by Tatum. Five yard gain. Bring up third down. You know you got a lot of good offenses in the Pac-12 and quarterbacks and all that when you see Caleb Williams about fifth or sixth on the list when we saw yards per game, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, looked like a free play, but I didn't see a flag come out. They're going to take the shot downfield for Odunze. <laughs> He's got it. Down to the 15. 
Justin White was in coverage. Yeah, there was no flag. I don't get it. I mean, that was as egregious as an offsides penalty as you're going to get. Everybody on the field, including the guy that jumped offsides, thought it was offsides. Goes for another explosive play for 40 yards. Doesn't matter. You're just giving the guy a green light to throw the ball deep. He, he It's already green. Yeah, he was going to throw that anyway. <laughs> exactly. That, that was exactly. the play. <laughs> Now, another substitution issue here for Michigan State. 26, Brandon Wright just running on the field. Penix, time, waiting, nothing open yet. Buying some time to the end zone, throwing it away. Jeremy Bernard was closest to it, just trying to get rid of it there. I might have found one other thing they can work on there. You know, I mean, Okay, you see the protection is phenomenal. The left defense end goes way up the field. So here, Michael Penix Jr. has a chance to step up and slide out. Receivers don't help him here on this one. Scramble drill. So that's where I was kind of being funny there, where we finally found something they could get better at. on second down for Bernard. Bernard taken out just inside the 10 by Dylan Tatum. There's a flag down. Oof. It's in the area of defensive holding. Down to the one yard line in the middle of the field. After the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 85, his first of the game. 15-yard penalty, second down. It's on Josh Cuevas, the tight end. Correction, oh, third down. down. Oh, we'll, we'll see. I, I didn't get a clear shot at it. I'm, I'm guessing it was a completion, and he went a little overzealous in the blocking after the whistle or by the time... Jeremy Bernard was already out of bounds. So it backs him up to third and 18. Empty backfield. Penix, short pass to Westover. And Westover picks up a chunk before he's brought down by Cal Halliday. So he picks up 11 yards. On third down, and they're going to kick another field goal here. It's still a, a really cool play there. They keep Westover in to block for about a split second. You're going to see. So it, they think, okay, we don't have to cover him. And then he slides out. So we set HUD. He maybe gives a two or three count, gets the secondary to go downfield and forget about him. And then he kind of slips in the voided seam there just to make the field goal a little easier. No touchdown on the play, though. No first, touchdown. First time he's how, caught a ball that hasn't gone in the end. How dare he? <laughs> Brady Gross, doink, and bounces in. I battle with you. Oh. They called timeout before that? Nope, they're okay. All is good. Kick is good. Yeah. Two for two for Brady Gross. He's now a 41 point lead for Washington on the road. Three update on Washington's Julius Bulow, who you see there walking into the tunnel. We saw him be helped off the field. He required a lot of assistance to the medical tent where he sat on the table. Trainers appeared to be focusing on his right ankle. He shook his head at one point when they appeared to ask him a question. After being in the tent for about three minutes, he emerged without his helmet. You saw him walk back to the locker room and he turned right up the tunnel, which is the direction of the Michigan State locker room and the x-ray room, not Washington's visiting locker room. All right, thank you so much for that, Caroline, as health becomes a priority here for Washington. Both these teams really playing out the rest of this football game, but as Michigan State's offense comes back onto the field, they, they need to have something to feel good about here at some point today, right? They, they got to. It's moving forward. The Big Ten schedule is about to start next week. You don't want to go into it with, with this poor offensive performance they've had. Nathan Carter, who is leading the Big Ten in rushing yards, 
per game, 112 through the first two weeks, has been held to just 26 yards on nine carries. And we're almost through three quarters today. It's just, it's out of sync everywhere all day long. Uh, you know, even there, ball too quick, throws the ball too quick, receiver's not ready. That's, and, that says a lot. And that's when, you know, Odunze has more receiving yards or total yards than the Michigan State offense is never a good thing. They give it to Carter. And he continues to spin with Alfonso Tupatala all over him, a four-yard gain. But Penix is thrown for 473 yards. And they've gone Washington 557 total yards. Michigan State just 164. But this Michigan State team is a timeout called by Washington. Timeout. Washington, their first of the half. 30 seconds. This Michigan timeout. State team. The schedule is four straight home games to start the year, which means they have a home game next week. Maryland is coming to town. Then they hit the road. They hit just two more home games left the rest of the way and some tough games on the road for them this year. Definitely. I mean, we know Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, they're going to be outmanned in those games, let alone maybe some other ones here as well. They're, they're going to have to go back to the lab here and reassess how they want to play on both sides of the ball. I think defensively, they might need to be a little bit more multiple, do more things, maybe take some more chances. Blitzing, uh, I don't know if their front four is going to be able to get home all year long. And offensively, as we're seeing here today, the, the, the receivers are not going to scare anybody, especially the elite teams in the Big Ten. So my thing would be, I'd love to see them be a little bit more, okay, let's run the ball, let's smash mouth, and then let's tie that together with play action pass and be one of those teams. They're a little too much in the shotgun and the spread formation for me, and I don't think they have the talent to support that. That pass incomplete through the hands of Glover, and no doubt Michigan State is looking forward to what you would consider a more normal week next week, right? Sunday they learned their head coach Mel Tucker was going to be suspended. Harlan Barnett is named acting head coach, first time head coach, was coaching the secondary, now a very different role for him. Yes, there were a lot of things in place, but it, it was a different week for him this week. It couldn't have helped the game plan. Right. Next week moving forward, we've got Mark D'Antonio as a resource as well. A little more normalcy. Next exactly. Week. Hopefully things are settled in. The new normal, if you will. Uh, right, a new normal. But but I know they're not going to make excuses, so we'll make the excuse for them. This is not an easy week. I, you know, it's not an easy week for the coaches, the players, the school, everybody. And, and unfortunately, it showed here today on Saturday. Well, Mark D'Antonio will see how much impact he has moving forward on this program. But Harlan Barnett, he, he didn't shy away from me. He knows it's an opportunity for him, right? He wanted to be a head coach. As you see Michael Penix Jr. dancing on the sideline because his day is done and Dylan Morris takes over. But Harlan Barnett wanted to be a head coach. This is the first time at 56 years old he's gotten that chance. Didn't want to have it this way, but knows if he wants to be a head coach in the future. This is a great opportunity for him to lead this team. That's exactly right. You know, he, he's anxious for this opportunity. And, and again, next week when maybe he, this Number week going in tomorrow, and he gets to kind of put his fingerprints on this game plan and everything and, and really gets to settle into the head coaching position, maybe they can look a little bit better as we go forward. Well, and Morris handing the ball off, and Tybo Rogers right up the gut for 16. Man, they, the Washington coaches told us we might see some Tybo Rogers today. Yep. He's young, he's talented, as you can see right there. I mean, he's, he has a burst hitting the hole. Freshman from Bakersfield, California. And Dylan Morris will keep handing it to him. Just a couple of yards on that one. Jordan Hall and Zion Young with the stop. Dylan Morris taking over from Michael Penix Jr. here late in the third quarter. This is a junior who was the starter in 2021 before the transfer of Michael Penix Jr. to Washington. Some gaudy numbers today for Penix, 473 yards, four touchdowns. No interceptions. 27 for 35, but there is Morris. 
in his 24 career games. Fifth year as part of the program. Not much there. Well, as we both know, Brendan, I mean, Michael Penix Jr. is going to the draft. He's going to be a, a millionaire this time next year. <laughs> He's might going be a millionaire to be a, this time next month. Oh, you, know, you might be a millionaire already. I'm forgetting it's the NIL yeah. era here. Got a little injury on the field here by somebody on Michigan State. Officials time out for an injury. But yeah, this is the last year of eligibility for Michael Penix, no matter what. Regardless, right. And we were I was shocked. I think we were both shocked he came back yeah. anyways. I, I thought he'd go and you know you only got one chance to, to get in the NFL and do it. Uh, but he wanted to come back and, and play and make a run for the national championship and he is phenomenal i mean as we're going to show here in the highlights it's throw the ball down the field great decisions patience in the pocket showed us touch showed us different ways launch points like you saw right there sidearm throws knows how to drop it down people in his face 60 yard bomb no problem uh, as I kind of said in the opening and in the pregame with you, Berkey, I just was, I looked at him. I think Caleb Williams is the best college quarterback in football right now, but this would be my number two. And I don't think it's by like a wide margin or anything like that. I'm really impressed with this kid with everything that he brings to the table and he will be a franchise quarterback in the NFL. So he decided to come back and play college football another year. Remember, he was robbed of a lot of his college career at Indiana four different times had season ending injuries that cut his year short. Torn ACL in 2018, broke his clavicle in 2019, dislocated his shoulder too as that one is complete for seven yards. As Mason Wheeler makes the catch. But another torn ACL in 2020, the separated shoulder in 2021, I mean, he was robbed of a lot of his college career, and he's seemingly going to make the most of what he gets. He is. I mean, they're in the national championship conversation. We know that. And then, you know, that'll be the big thing that gets picked apart, his injury history when it's time for the NFL draft talk and all of that. But what I would say to that, as we see Tybo Rogers get tackled for a two-yard loss, what I would say to that is, yeah, I don't think this guy's injury-prone either. But again, he was on not very good teams in Indiana yeah. when you're not protected and you're put in some vulnerable positions. It's tough to stay healthy. I don't think it's going to be a thing of the future. That's the end of the third period. A little bit of a different protection coming for him next year. <laughs> exactly right. Although he's well protected here in Washington. Very well. As well. Third period comes to a close. Third quarter, I should say. 41 points unanswered so far for Washington. Fourth quarter next. Football on Peacock, presented by Geico. Marching band doesn't play when Journey's playing in the stadium here. Spartan Stadium. They give him respect. That's right. This isn't South Detroit, but close enough. Michael Penix Jr. on the sidelines. His team up 41 through three quarters. Oh, that's the best when you're on the sidelines in a blowout. Nothing feels better as a quarterback. Be much happier flight home for oh. the Huskies. Well, that's another thing. I mean, it, those are the moments you miss a, as a player when you're all done is the camaraderie on the sideline in a win like this and then the plane flight home being a little extra crazy and rambunctious and everything. Those are the things I miss a lot about football and good for these kids. They're all living it and experiencing it, having a lot of fun. This Husky team better get used to the long flights joining the Big Ten next year. This is a business trip. They are taking notes and making sure they figure out their Big Ten travel. What they like, what they don't like, how their bodies adjust to the time changes. It's going to be a different animal for them starting next year. Definitely. They're going to have to figure those things out. And I would think they're going to have to talk, talk to some NFL teams, talk to coaches, how they handle it certain ways. You know, some of those teams on the West Coast, whether it be the 49ers, Shanahan, or McVay, they always tinker with when we got to go to the East Coast and play a 1 p.m. game. So well, they here, have, here's they the have. new look. There's East and West this year. That is going away. Four new schools joining the Big Ten. The divisions are going away as well, but Oregon, UCLA, USC, and Washington 
true coast to coast conference in Big Ten football. Dylan Morris going to throw here on fourth and six. And he'll throw it away and give the ball back to the Spartans. Some pressure on the play from Avery Dunn, the redshirt junior on the defensive end. We step aside here in East Lansing with a 41-point lead for the visiting Huskies and Kayla DeBoer. More cars, more thrills, higher stakes. Tom Toretto and his crew are back, and this time they've faced their deadliest foe. Experience one of the year's biggest movies with Fast X, streaming now exclusively on Peacock. Shrek and Donkey are still here. The diehards are here. Noah Kim, starting quarterback on the right, has given way to Caton Hauser, the redshirt freshman, who comes in at quarterback here in the fourth quarter. Going to roll out on his first play and take a shot, and it's incomplete. It falls at the feet of Malik Carr. Oh, wow. Had a chance there. Did. I, I liked what we saw from Hauser there. He'd like Malik Carr to be able to put his right foot in the ground and come back and make that play. It's tough to get 265 pounds redirected that way. Had him open, but that's the hard thing. You're a righty running to your left. It's hard to always get the proper power to make that throw. And off to Carter. Loss of two. Might as well get Caden Hauser some reps as well. There was a thought that he could challenge for the starting quarterback position here this year with right. Noah Kim. Hauser last year took a total of six offensive snaps. Oh, and I think, you know, Brendan, with what we've seen with pass protection, we know that Noah Kim's 185 pounds. It's that. I think they're probably maybe even giving him a few extra. It's smart to get this guy reps. That throw is complete. Tyrell Henry. Oh, no, he dropped it. It looked like he had it. Also looked like that wasn't necessarily where the pass was intended to, but it wound up right seemingly in Henry's breadbasket. Yeah, you know, it, it was a good job. I think he, there was a guy underneath crossing. I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt that he was throwing to the intended target there. But you see, that's where size is a skill a little bit. He's bigger than Noah Kim at 6'3", 215, throwing off his back foot with pressure. He could still kind of push the ball down the field. See that ball pop out as the end as he rolled on the grass. Yep, did not survive the ground. Okay. And so they have to punt. Michael O'Shaughnessy. Denzel Boston calls for the fair catch at the 20. After a 47-yard punt. Check, make sure you check me out tomorrow night on Football Night in America. Yeah, we'll be watching. All right. We'll we, got watching. A, we got a good little show. We're excited. It's a good matchup. The Patriots' D is real. That Miami Dolphins' offense is real behind Tua. Should be a good one. Yeah, it's fun to watch. And off to Tybo Rogers. Goes for a couple. Oh, here's Tua. Oh, he had a day like the lefty we saw today. This guy last week, what was it, 466 yards. Their offense, and we kind of joked about this with Ryan Grubb uh, yesterday. I mean, all the motions, the movements, he said he studied them, the 49ers, and how they do all that stuff. And they're like a track team out there. Tyree Kill is one of the fastest people in the history of football. Jalen Waddell, Raheem Mozart, and then Mike McDaniel's creativity matched up against Belichick's genius is going to be fun. Dylan Morris has a wide open man downfield complete to Josh Cuevas. Tracked down to the 22. Dylan Tatum with a touchdown saving tackle but how about an explosive play for 50 from the backup. Yeah good job by him. These are valuable reps for him. This is his chance to prove hey I'm the starter next year. Don't let anybody come in here from the transfer portal and steal my job. Second time today we saw a cover three corner not get back in his third. That was the problem there. To throw again. Right time across and inside the five. Intercepted. Jaden Mangum grabbed that ball before it hit the ground. Interception. Michigan State. 
Great catch. Tayshawn Lyons should have caught this ball, though. This was a good throw by Dylan Morris. I mean, I, I believe it was really right in his face. And Tayshawn Lyons got his hands up a little late. And the ball popped in the air. Yeah, perfect throw. On point. And good job by Jalen Mangham getting his hands underneath that and getting the INT. Looks like he got it, too. Yeah. Jaden Mangum, a sophomore from Beverly Hills, not that Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills, Michigan. And his older brother is Jaron Mangum, also wears number one for Michigan State, transferred in from USF, and they thought they'd have that big body in the backfield, but he has been unable to play for the first three weeks of the season. I, I, I saw that. It caught my attention when I first started studying Michigan State. Like, brothers wearing the same number with two different body types. Yep. That was, was funny, too. Nice push for five yards to get a little bit of separation from that end zone for Nate Carter. Mikel Esteem with the stop. Get something positive, get some points on the board. Nobody wants to be shut out. Yep. That's the goal right now for Michigan State. Carter gets to the 10. As Michigan State's trying to avoid the shutout for the first time since 2020. They were shut out week 11 by, oh yeah, Michael Penix Jr.'s uh, Indiana Hoosiers. Wow. So you're telling me he's bad luck. For, <laughs> he has no effect seemingly on the defense. <laughs> right. But apparently he does. <laughs> He's about to go to three and one in his career against Michigan State. As that goes ahead for three yards for Carter and a first down. I mean, these two teams met last year. It was out in Seattle, right? It was week three, and it was Michigan State ranked number 11. That's right. Because people didn't know what Washington was going to do in their first year under Kalen DeBoer. Right. By the end, we knew. We knew. That was the first moment we went, oh, Washington might be pretty good yeah. here. And then it's just continued on an upward trajectory ever since then. Carter gets to the 20. Now, there's a part of me that wants to go, why is Nathan Carter in the game? You know, I, I would say he's the best player on their offensive side of the ball. But at the same time, too, like we just talked about, they want to get points and something positive, and he's the guy that can deliver that. That's Carter's 16 carry. Gets a yard. He's up to 49 yards on the ground here today. Noah Kim came out of the game 12 for 31 passing for 136 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. And as Carter heads off, Jordan Simmons is now in the back. But Kaden Hauser has come on in place of Look Noah Kim. Safety here. I mean, it's throw the ball down the field, take a shot. Keep handing it off. Simmons was able to spin off the initial tackle. Good enough for a first down. Maurice Himes made the tackle. Good run. Like you said, spin it off the tackle. Leg drive continued. And I like it. The, the, the fans that are still here, they realize positive points. And they're they're still rooting for their team here, trying to trying to get some mojo going. Maurice Himes, number 45, eventually made that tackle. He's another guy that never played varsity high school football. He's from Germany, moved to California as a junior in high school. There's a shot downfield for Christian Fitzpatrick. Racing towards the end zone, taken down at the ankles after 63 yards by Darren Barkins. That's what I like to see right there, and I think they're going to have to continue to do that and run the football you know, as they go forward. But you'll see this is a quarter's coverage, and there's the safety kind of sits on the slot route there. That leaves no safety in the middle of the field. And Fitzpatrick, a big target, who has a lot of physical ability. I think catching the ball is the thing that is why he's not in there consistently, but nice throw there by Hauser. First catch of the day for Christian Fitzpatrick. And just like that, he's their leading receiver. Medical attention for Darren Barkins of the Huskies after the tackle. 
ball is here. The best players from around the world face off in the Rugby World Cup. Watch New Zealand, Ireland, France, South Africa, and so many more compete for the Webb Ellis Cup live September 8th through October 28th on Peacock. Alante Brown getting a chance in the backfield. Stopped by Voy Tunuufi. But Alante Brown, who is a wide receiver by trade and was injured on the opening kickoff week one and had to be carted off the field and got a lot of attention for actually coming back and playing another play in that game later on. And Michigan State has kind of changed their protocols a little bit after that, but he hasn't played since then until today. Yeah, and they, they gave us a little warning that, that he might get some run at running back. Yep. You can see he shifted. Transfer from Nebraska this time. They dump it off to Tyneal Hopper, the tight end. He brings everybody with him inside the five. 11-yard pickup on the first catch for Hopper. Transfer from Boise State. Oh, and I hope he's okay. Yeah, his legs got stuck under the pile as he was driving. Tough stretch here in the fourth quarter. Both teams dealing with injuries. Our last break, Darren Banks, Darren Barkins, excuse me, had to be helped off the field. He's still in the tent for Washington, and now some attention needed for Hopper. It's kind of what happens in those rugby scrums like we just <laughs> saw there. Oh. You know, there's a lot of bodies around. Somebody grabbed them by the upper body and kind of stopped them. It's a great play call here by offensive coordinator Jay Johnson. I like that. But you'll see he drives, they move the pile, but then somebody kind of stops him from the top, and now everybody falls on his leg right there. The right leg. And that's hopefully nothing serious. Hopefully, I'm hoping it's just high ankle sprain. But when they start to bring this bag out, that usually means it's more than that. We'll step aside as they tend the to field. tiny little hopper on the field. Big one next week is Ohio State visits Notre Dame. Now before in prime time on NBC here in East Lansing, Washington up big, and they have loaded Tiny Hill Hopper onto the cart after the injury. Tough way to see him head off the field for a sixth-year guy using his final year of eligibility here at Michigan State after transferring in from Boise State. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You never like to see this happen. Kid works hard. Gets a little chance to get in the game here, play, do something. Has a positive moment, and then it kind of comes crashing down. It just uh, not been a good day by Michigan State. Not only have they not played well, but just some bad luck has gone against them as well. Hopper had his first catch last week for his first Spartan touchdown. And his first catch today was a positive play, ending in a negative way. First and goal for the Spartans as they try and get on the board here. With six and a half minutes to go in the fourth. Carter, the lone man in the backfield. They'll give it to him. Nowhere to go. Taken down quickly by Jacob Bandez. They got some depth, the big guys, too, up front. I mean, Bandez, 6'3", 302. You know, so they can, they can be athletic. They can get big people on the field and just make the run game a mosh pit in the middle and hard to move guys off the spot. Really well coached football team, Washington. I was very impressed with the offense and defensive game plan, studying them and, of course, watching them today. On second down, Hauser keeps it himself. End zone, touchdown. Caden Hauser puts the Spartans on the board. It's a 99-yard drive, finished off by Hauser. Yep, little quarterback keep around the... I didn't... I thought he was going to run to the front pylon. I thought he could have done that. Instead, he cut it up, kind of put his body in harm's way, but he crosses the goal line and gets the touchdown. 
Jonathan Kim puts the extra point through. And the crowd that's left here at Spartan Stadium appreciates the late effort by Caton Hauser and Michigan State. You don't want to get shut out. You don't want to get shut out. You don't. It's a real thing. You know, no coach wants that on their resume. It's just, it gives you nothing positive to talk about or think about when it comes to watching the film tomorrow. So something to build on there. Hauser looked good. It's an 11 play, 99 yard drive. Took five minutes and 25 seconds off the clock. And Kate Hauser. Redshirt freshman was the third string quarterback in redshirt a couple of years ago last year appeared in one game six offensive snaps So still very young very green And obviously they brought him here to Michigan State for a reason maybe not now maybe not next year But at some point they're hoping Kate Hauser becomes the guy. I, I like what I see I mean one he stood out to me on the practice field yesterday. He's got a, a very athletic strong looking body especially compared to Noah Kim and I don't think Noah Kim's got to be worried or anything like that as of yet. But we know how it works. I mean, if they have too many showings like they did today on the offensive side of the ball, now the coaching staff will have a little confidence in Caden Hauser and, and what maybe he can do. I'll kick this one away. Fair catch signal from Will Nixon for the touchback. So we're into the final six minutes here of the fourth quarter in a game that has been dominated by Washington really from the onset. Michael Penix Jr. threw for 473 yards and four touchdowns, giving way to Dylan Morris, who threw an interception as he was threatening to put his first touchdown on the board. Still shifting. Tybo Rogers trying to turn the corner. Rogers gets himself out across the 40, 18 yards before he's knocked out of bounds by Khalil Majid. Rogers has got some juice. He definitely has another gear. He's a little gimpy there. Because as he's going up the sideline, first off, I love this run play. Pulled the backside guard, pulled the backside tackle. And Rodgers, when you get in this situation right here, get your feet off the ground when you see that defender coming low. Because that's what happened. He gets hit low, and it just tweaks the ankle a little bit. Richard Newton is now in the game in the backfield for the first time with Rodgers out. And Newton will get the carry, and he bursts right up the gut. How about that? Wasn't even on schedule to come into the game. The hand of the ball, he goes for 17. When it's working, it's working. And I mean, we're at the point here where head coach Kalen DeBoer, he's, yeah, we want to work and have some positives, but he just wants to get out of here without anybody getting hurt. But they're still gashing them in the run game. Newton again. Gets to the 40. Dre Butler makes the tackle. The clock continues to run. And another injury on the field. And it is Dre Butler. Transfer from Liberty. Started his college career at Auburn that is now down on the field for the Spartans. Boy, it just seems like every other play at this point, somebody's going down. It's it's pretty unreal. And uh, Butler looks uncomfortable. Uh, the, the, the one thing we saw there with with uh, Richard Newton is he's he's powerful. Yeah, that that certainly jumps out at you. Six foot two twenty three. So when he lowers his shoulder, you're going to feel it on the defensive side of the ball. He's a senior, has gotten a huge opportunity to play, so when he gets in the game and they hand him the football, he's running like it's a uh, scoreless game. That's right. That, those are the, the, you know, th those are like the guys you really root for on the sideline, too, in these situations. Michael Penix Jr., because you realize what? Well, he's put so much into the program. He's such a program guy. He's humble. 
He does all the right things. So everybody roots for that type of player. And they are now just getting Dre Butler up onto his feet, but he's going to need some help getting off the field. He's holding his shoulder. He already has a little shoulder blade brace on that right shoulder. So I'm sure it's been something before or he re-aggravated it because it wasn't necessarily a violent blow right there. No. That's more of like, wait, I have an issue with my shoulder already and just got hit the wrong way. And it can be very painful when stuff like that happens. You can see he's squeezing his hands because he's, well, hopefully it's just a stinger or something like that and he could shake it off. The day it was for Romo Dunze, who just showed on the sidelines, 180 yards himself before he took a permanent spot on the sideline. Newton to the 40. Bring him third down after no game. So after a few runs for Richard Newton, Tybo Rogers checks back in. Coming back to the freshman. Michigan State jump free play here. And it is caught. No, they ruled it incomplete. Looking for Wheeler. Comes up empty. Morris took a shot as he let go of that football, too. He did. Got it downfield. Just threw the ball a little short. Wheeler tried his best to kind of pick it off the ground, but I think it, it skips right before it gets into his hands here. And don't you love when receivers just come up and act like they caught it no matter what? Yep. <laughs> Big hit right there. Yeah, Maverick Hansen. He was the one the penalty was on, so might as well get his money's worth. Pitch it to Rogers. And it'll be close. Jordan Hall stopped them. A couple of yards. Looks like he might be marked just shy. And it is just short. Fourth down coming up. Well, they're going to go for it. They'll run it up the middle, I would say, one more time here. Kalen DeBoer, what a job he has done since taking over this Washington program. 11-2 last year, 3-0 against ranked opponents. Now he's the ranked team. And his team's looking awfully good here through three weeks on their schedule as Rodgers keeps the ball in the hands of the Huskies. Like you said, Brendan, though, he's done a phenomenal job. And I think he's built something here just in a short time to where young kids around the country are going to see it. They're going to go, wow, I want to play for this offense. It's fun. It's wide open. It does everything. So he's going to be able to recruit receivers and running backs there. And then, of course, the way they coach the X's and O's, like I've been saying all night, extremely impressed with their creativity. It's a guy who started his head coaching career at the college level at Sioux Falls back in 2005. He has worked to get to this level. His previous two seasons at Fresno State. Mentioned his time at Indiana with Michael Penix Jr. as an offensive coordinator, quarterback coach. And now he, here he is with the keys to the Lamborghini. That's right. He's got a Lamborghini right now. Rogers cuts it back, and he stayed on his feet and took a little more punishment. Couple of yards the hard way. Well, you can see this Tyvo Rogers. He's going to be something. You know, maybe this gives them a little more confidence to infuse him into the game plan on a regular basis. Because he is a little different than Dylan Johnson or Will Nixon, where they're a little bit more power-based. He can kind of be your jitterbug, 
you know, change a pace guy, get him on the outside, and he can turn up the field like we've seen and rip off a 20 or 30 yard game. That run put the Huskies over 700 yards today. Say again? They're Seven. averaging 10.2 yards per play. That's insane. And they're trying to run the ball and run the clock out here for the last hour, and they're still getting 10 <laughs> yards per play. Now they're 10 yards from the end zone. <laughs> they got to run one more play. Let's see if they run a play or kneel on it. I think they're going to run a play, though. I, I haven't seen them take the foot off the gas pedal the whole night. No, they, oh, here they go. They made us think they were going to take a knee at the end of the half, but they didn't. This time, they will take the knee and run the clock all the way down. That was their 71st play. They're going to finish this game with 713 yards. To their credit, tough debut for Harlan Barnett. A tough week for the Michigan State program. But Washington comes on the road to East Lansing. And the number eight ranked Huskies put up the first 41 points of this football game. They are really a really good football team. And I'm not sure they can run the table because they, like we talked about, the Pac-12 is talented with some talented quarterbacks. But they are definitely one of the best teams in college football. And it might come down to them versus USC and see where that goes. And, and the way it's set up, they could play them twice, regular season and the Pac-12 championship. But I look at it and go, they're at USC. They get Oregon and Utah at home. That's beneficial. And then we know Oregon State on the road later in the year, followed by the rivalry game against Washington State. But there's no team that's going to outclass Washington. That's what I know from watching all week and watching today. That They got it all. And no one's just going to be a mismatch or be able to take advantage of some troubled area on their roster altogether. Their win streak is now at 10 games dating back to last season. This is a team that has not lost much since the start of last year. Just two losses and now 10 in a row including three straight this year to start the season. Yeah, right? Lost two in a row, run, run off to the end of the year, beat my Longhorns in the Alamo yeah. Bowl. How dare they, right? Yep. And you're seeing here that the Longhorns are, of course, back in the national picture, and Washington with Michael Penix Jr. is going to be in it all year long. 27 for 35, 473 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He's taking selfies. <laughs> That's he, He's become a star. With somebody that had a Spartan on like, their shirt. Yeah, he's like, you're good. I don't care what team you're yeah. on. Please let me get a picture so I can save it in my iPhone. And you see him making his way over to our very own Caroline Pineda, and we send it her direction. Caroline? Michael, your head coach, Kalen DeBoer, told us this would be the toughest test yet for this team. How do you think you did? Uh, I feel like it was a great game. You know, it was a great team win. You know, all, all sides of the ball, you know, offense, defense, special teams, we did a, a remarkable job. But obviously, there's some plays that we left out there as well. You know, we're not perfect, and, you know, that's what we're striving to be. So we got to continue to go back to the drawing board and uh, get, get back ready for next week. A year ago, you upset a ranked Michigan State team. Today, you won in dominant fashion as the ranked team. What does that say about the strides this program has taken in the last year? Yeah, man, it's just it's just so much work that we have put in, you know, in the offseason to be able to get here, you know, just trusting and believing in everything that the coaches instilling into us and, and just going out there and having fun and executing at a high level. And I, I definitely feel like, you know, it's definitely motivation, you know, with the guys going into the Big Ten next year. Uh, so it's definitely a lot of motivation. And you mentioned there's still work to do. Where do you go from here? What becomes the focus? Yeah, uh, just continue to, to stay crisp. You know, uh, I remember first half, it was two times, it was only two times we didn't score. And Coach Grubb, he comes into the uh, locker room. He's like, I hope you all not satisfied. You know, it, we went two drives without scoring. You know, it, we we're beating ourselves up with early penalties. And those, those are the things we want to clean up so that we can come out here and play better. Thanks, Mike. Congrats on the win. All right. Thank you. Go dogs.